Three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and it is story time live. Got a uh, special guest uh, host tonight, uh, real Dr. Vankman. What's going on, uh, RDV? Not much. Uh, I was wondering where Jimmy is. I don't know, man. Seeing that he like likes this comic more than life itself. Yeah, I thought this would uh, this would be the thing. He's been requesting this forever, but he uh, maybe he gave up on me. <laughs> mm. Sometimes you make people wait too long, and they they move along. Well, we're gonna. You know, I've noticed. Go ahead. I was gonna say I was talking to uh, you uh, before this offline, so I had a headache, you know, because. And then I saw you were doing this, and then I'm like, well, maybe that's the reason I have the headache, because it's, you know, it's Jason Aaron Thor. But then I, the longer I look at the photo, the more my headache's going away. Well, the art is really nice. It's one thing, I think it's a beer setting land. One thing I cannot criticize about this book <laughs> is the art. Um, Saad Rabik is pretty darn amazing, and uh, it's, a pre it's a very pretty book to look at, so I hope... I hope this is the best thing that Jason Aaron's ever written. That's that's what I hope. What year is this from? Uh, I, I noticed the Marvel now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, oh, someone in the someone in the chat can fill us in tonight. The stream is brought to you by Pepsi Blue. I am oh, drinking man. Pepsi Blue. Uh, I found it. I thought you were sh pulling my <laughs> chain. You were like, "Did you get the Pepsi Blue?" I was like, "No, it's on that stupid thing." That's a... but it was in the store, and uh, so I, I was like, "Grab it!" And uh, I like it. It's I like it I've better never than had mango. I thought it's a throwback. Like you know, they had, from remember a couple years ago they had Pepsi clear, uh, clear came back or Crystal Pepsi. That's what I thought back. it was. That's why I thought when you're like, "Did you get the Pepsi Blue?" I was like, "Shut up!" You know that was like. <laughs> But it was at so it was at not. Walmart. Um. So yeah, you can find some you can find All some right. cool stuff at Walmart actually. Um. And and cheap timer? six packs of bottles for two fifty. Yeah. I think we should set the timer first before we continue. Oh, you're right. I should set the timer. Beep. There you go. So thirty minutes from now, we're gonna be reading. Let's read Thor. preheat the oven. <laughs> preheat the oven. <laughs> That's a good term. I might I might use that. Um let's see. I'm looking I looked it up. So this is uh started in 2012, went to 2014. It's a 25 issues uh limited series. So yeah. Mm, yeah, better than the mango. Mango is alright. A little too sweet for me. But I'm looking at the I'm looking at the covers of this on uh Marvel.com actually show you like the cover and stuff. Uh -huh. You can get with Marvel now. But Marvel Limited. They're actually really good. Oh yeah. Um, is, I'm telling you, Saad Rabik is a great artist. And every single so he's, every single issue was him. Every single cover was him. This I was just, back when Marvel gave you what you paid for, I guess. Like <laughs> uh, you didn't just get shit. Um even though it was Marvel now, that was a bad era. Um maybe uh, that's yeah, why this book stands out. <laughs> because when Jimmy if Jimmy discovered this book during the Marvel Now era, this this would have been like the Holy Grail. This would have just been like, oh, the greatest comic ever. Because, I mean, Marvel was pretty bad during that era. Yeah, because I'm looking at the covers. It has that painted kind of art style. And it's, you know, because I recognize this style also. I see, and today when I look at the the Red Sonia or the or any of the Dynamite covers, you know, with the, with the girls on them, because Lucio Perillo does a kind of a similar paint te technique too for the covers. And I kind of like that stuff when you get the oil painting covers. Yeah, yeah. It just seems sure. it just seems more real, not more realistic, but less like comic bookish. I'd say. For sure, it's you less know? comic booky. I mean, I like line art over painted art usually, but there's times when it's nice. Like Marvels, it's one of my favorite books of all time. It's all painted, and you know this book. I think the art is cool. Um, I wouldn't want to see every comic go this way. No. It's kind of like um, animation, right? When Pixar mm -hmm. came on the scene, now every American animated st studio, when they make movies, oh. it's just they're all 3D computer animated. Everything looks like Jimmy Neutron. 
<laughs> it's, it's like, like any kids show it's like you're for five-year-olds on netflix is like jimmy neutron almost so. yeah i mean i mean I'm, the shows are a little different but i mean the the movies right like i miss the old yeah. school 2d line animation like especially like disney movies now every new disney movie going forward they, they've they've abandoned their line animation they've um, abandoned the animation now it's all going live action well i know that that's that's just so they can <laughs> cash that's just so they can double dip on their right? old properties. Well, let's rehash everything and then change it. And well, I, I mean, hope. Lion King. I mean, it's the 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 remake of the Lion King is the seventh highest grossing film of all time. I mean, oh, from a business really? standpoint, I, I can't blame them. I thought Beauty and the Beast did better. Nope, Lion really? King is humongous. Yeah. Um, Makes so. sense because they probably gave very like the original ones. They expected the same kind of humor. I I, don't know, I didn't watch it, so I don't know if you get the same kind of humor like you with, with like Zazu and Timon and Pumbaa, or if it's just you like you do. I I'm I'm actually I know a lot of people go it's popular to hate on the new Lion King movie. I actually really liked it. I'm a big fan. I love the original Lion King. This one was like eighty percent the same. And then they made a few key changes here and there because obviously they didn't get the same voice actors. Like they didn't get um, Jeremy. What's it? Jeremy Irons is not Scar. They didn't get Whoopi Goldberg as the Heinet. So they got new voice actors. So they kind of went slightly different direction to capitalize on what those voice actors did. And obviously, like in Timon and Pumbaa were similar, but again, different voice actors. So they didn't have. What I liked is that they didn't try to get a different voice actor to try to pretend to be the other voice actor. That would have just yeah. been a train wreck. Um, so uh, I, I I liked it. I mean, I like the the original <laughs> Lion King better, but I like having both versions. Uh, and it's visually yeah, it's, it's 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 redonkulous. Like the opening visual is this like bug <laughs> crawling on stuff, and the whole time when I was sitting in the theater, I was like, "Is this a real bug?" This can't be a real bug. It looks exa- like it looks a hundred percent real. He's <laughs> like, and then it starts doing yeah. stuff. You're like, no, it, it's the whole movie. You're like, is, is it, this computer? Well, I like, can't tell. Like when the bug pulls out a gun, yeah, it yeah it's, like, gun right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the the one weird I guess thing about like... the movie was when the animals talked. They like tried to animate the lips, lips, and that, yeah, and that was a little weird. But whatever, so you're either gonna like it or you're gonna hate it. I liked it. Um, I'm just glad they didn't get like you know. I hope they don't. They're never gonna do anything like Shrek. They try to live action version of that because ogre would be scary looking. And not only that, you'd have uh, imagine someone you have to get another actor try to be like intimidate like or, or you know do their own version of the monkey. Like they're trying to be like Eddie Murphy. Like it's like imagine they grabbed like Tracy Morgan. Like you're gonna be you're gonna have you do. Uh, be Eddie Murphy because Eddie Murphy's busy, so we're gonna have you fill in for the voice. It just wouldn't fit the role. I, I, I don't. Your certain roles, I don't think you can re- replace people as voice actors. It's like, but Batman, I mean, series that's Kevin Conroy. I know they've tried for the, some of the DC movies. They've got like Jason O'Mara, a lot of people, but it's like, I still we also, I still go back to Conroy. He's, he's my number one. Yeah, Same with Con- Superman. Conroy is the epitome. Of, when I, when I read yeah. Batman in the comics. I yeah. hear Conroy's voice in my head. Yeah, like Tim Daly, it was did the voice of Superman in the animated series in the in the nineties. So when I see her Jerry O'Connell, it's just like that doesn't fit. I I grew up with you know with certain voice actors from the Justice League. They kept the same voice actors, so those are why I associate with them, you know, yeah. because they're the first ones. Well, it's it's human nature to accept the first thing that you hear, which is makes it really tough when you start changing things around for new generations. Mm-hmm. Because in the new generation, they see, like, the new remake or whatever, and then they don't have appreciation for the original because, to them, the original is a copy. And so, well, and I'm just like, I'm okay with remakes when when there's a reason. Like, I'm okay with the live-action Disney stuff because the original stuff was animated. And so you're like, we're going to do it with live-action and get the same story, but something that the animation couldn't do. Like each one is unique in what it can deliver. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like really old movies that just didn't have the production values. Maybe it was a black and white film and they yep. were like doing cardboard cutout special effects. And nowadays you're like, let's remake this with, 
that's cool too. What I don't like is like, yeah, this movie five years ago, <laughs> we're gonna remake it. You're like, what? What are you doing? Um, but uh, it'd be like when I read the X Men, I, uh, I, I think of the, uh, I the voice in my head is not Hugh Jackman. It may be for you, I don't know, but mine is uh, Cathal J Dot, the guy from the from the animated series. And no, no I, I mean some people. I, unless you're saying you're, you're Yours is the, the no, no, I don't, I don't listen, no, because I read X Men for decades before I ever heard Hugh Jackman voice Wolverine before, you know, like actually I did hear the cartoon because I saw the cartoon in the nineties, um, yeah, and I hated that. I was like, that's this Australian Wolverine. So I had my own voices well before then, and I just rejected because well, I've never was heard the, him. I've never seen X Men done good outside the comics. There's two, there's two voice actors. There's the one from the Pride of the X Men. Where he was Australian, you know that, and that the botched pilot, and then there was the one from the nineteen ninety four series, an X Men. So I mean, I get because that's where I, I read anything with Rogue or, or Gambit. It's in their voices, you know. It's just something I've always so, grown up associated with, you know. Yeah. So I, I, that's how I know the. And character. that's partly why I ignored it, right? Like I don't want that tainting my, it's my my vision. I just I did not like. I have not liked anything X Men outside the comics. I just. Yeah, but speaking of outside the comics, let's see who's uh, joined us in the chat tonight. Dragon Majesty was first. Well, good job, buddy. Uh, Got to keep Melissa on her toes. Um, can't have her taking it all the time. RDV second. Good job, buddy. Um, and Dominic is third. Uh, FF2's in the house. Ed Brewer. Uh, no, buddy, you're not fourth. You're fifth. But welcome anyway. Everyone is welcome. Rania <laughs> is best. I like that's pretty clever. She always claims it's like I don't care what number I am, I'm best. Um, she says, "What the hell is that cover supposed to be? This is one of the derpiest looking poses I've ever seen for a supposed uber masculine warrior god. If that's a reflection of the content's quality, yikes! Jesus, was that a Mar was that an X Men reference or Hell? H E L? Isn't that hell? like the hell is the Thor's sister? Hell, the, the oh yeah, is she sister or is she just well, Loki's in the daughter? Movies. I don't remember what she is in the. In the movie, she was. So, again, that's one of those things that, like, it taints my memories. Um, I don't know, Marania. That's not a... That's... I don't think that's not... I don't have a worse. problem with that pose. It's not derpy. I think Marania's just being a little salty tonight. I'm rubbing off on her. Um, um, phrasing. What? Context. Oh. <laughs> oh. Bad phrasing. Oh, yeah. shit. I'm canceled. <laughs> well, that was nice knowing you guys. Uh, let's see. Dominic says, you should. it should give you a tease of what's to come in the book. While it's beautifully crafted, it didn't properly convey the book's plot. It's a number one issue. Number one issues never, well, I don't say never. Typically, they're just like a pose of a main character. Um, I, yeah, I have no problems it does tell you what's going on in the book. It's it's Thor. Yeah, it's Thor, God of Thunder. <laughs> He's posing with a hammer. Gigantic number. Look at the size of that number one. I should probably switch it over so people can see. Um, <laughs> the size of that number one. It's like Marvel's like, make sure you notice it's number one. <laughs> like, like the number yeah, one is bigger than the Marvel logo. Like the twice as big yeah. as the Marvel logo. <laughs> That's the only book that has a number on it. The rest are all the all the numbers are at the very bottom. They even have it on there. Oh yeah, the I I believe this in the Marvel Now era. I think they put the numbers in the barcode. They put yeah. it like really small, if I remember. So it was oh. one of these eras. Like you were like, what? I know they had the they had the. Let me look in your thing. It's because Marvel knows the only number that matters is number one. The Marvel Now, and then is there? Uh, is, are you doing full screen? Is there on the bottom of yours? Does it show the? The red joined the revolution. Yeah, I cut that off for the graphic. Okay, okay, because that's because that's where they have the numbers for pretty much all the books. Yeah, yeah screw that. Uh, I hate the, that up, red up, bar. Up, up, the Marvel. But that's but that only goes with the issue seven. But then the red bar is still there <laughs> for the next couple issues. Yeah, because that whole Marvel, the Marvel now was like that. It was like I hate it. Um, you know, says, you know the dump. Mjolnir should be almost be an almost. Wait, Mjolnir should be in almost Thor's right hand. <laughs> she, is that a slight? Is she trying to say that's almost Thor? <laughs> uh, the way he's holding it in his left hand is awkward at best. He also has a really weird derpy expression. All in all, epic fail of a cover. 
I agree though. It should, the, the hammer should be up, and you should have lightning coming. You know, that's, that's a hammer. sod rebeak that you're derping on right there. It looks like he's pulling it off from a sword sheath that he doesn't have. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, kind of actually. Now that you mentioned, well, it, it looks like I'm he's kind of drawing a sword. <laughs> like I, I also am cheating. I'm looking at the other covers ahead of though. Like they does get better. The covers do. If you don't like that first one, they do get better. I don't know. I just like Solder Beak's art. Uh, it is it is kind of derpy though. Like you know, I can I, I can understand what you're saying. You know the 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 big torso, the big arms, the big legs. You know, the tiny head. I think you know, it, I'm the, proud of waist. you guys. When I'm the um, when I'm not the saltiest person in the room, <laughs> that that makes me a happy guy. <laughs> let's let's blow this up bigger here to see. Um. Let's see. I'm watching my phone. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it is kind of a weird pose, but I don't think it's derpy. Um, See, I love that. Join the revolution. <laughs> join the revolution. Marvel did that for a lot of them uh, across all their titles. They had the stupid bar thing, the red banner. Marvel down. Join the revolution. Yeah, so uh, evolution. Look at that. They put the evolution rebel. black, so it's uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever, Marvel, you failed. Um let's see, let me get through these chats here. Um almost almost Thor looks like he was caught mid step and leading a parade. That's not a warrior like pose. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's flying. Maybe that's what it is. Like he's flying up in the air and it caught him. Um, and he's got I, is that Odin behind why him? Is, why is Moranya calling him Omos Thor? Is is Moranya trying to suggest that maybe it's someone else's actual Thor? Maybe someone named Jane, and he's just Omos Thor. It's you can't really see his hair, so he looks like he's just like you know uh, Kane unmasked from wrestling, and he just cut his hair. Bold. Well, his hair's yeah, it's under the helmet. Yeah, you can't see it. You know. You can kind of see a little bit in the back, yeah, behind his neck. Uh, let's see. Marani says she put that ice cream I suggested on the shopping list. Hope to get it. Is that that dryers that I said? Oh, um, that was, that's what she. What? This is where we get unworthy Thor. We're talking later about ice in the series. Right now. Oh, sorry. Ice cream. I, I, I ice trying to figure out why cream. she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to know. She said almost Thor because now I I looked ahead. That's I haven't why. I haven't got ahead yet. You're gonna distract me. I I gotta try to get through these chats as so I get oh, to the okay, bottom. Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about so ice. Cream. Ice. That dryer's ice cream is pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of salted caramel ice cream though. Um, so Marani, it's good. I think you like it because you're a bigger fan. I think it would have been better if it was chocolate ice cream with salted caramel ribbons in it. But it's got little toffee bits and it's got chocolate covered pretzel bits. Ugh, Ugh it was delicious. <laughs> oh, so good. Chocolate ice cream with yeah. pretzels. Uh I bet I like my Ben and Jerry tonight though. Dude, Ben and Jerry's used <laughs> to have a flavor. It's now in their graveyard called Peanut Turtle. And that was the first time it had pretzels in it. And it was it's my favorite ice cream of all time. And I and they got rid of it. I was mad. I was like, screw you, Ben and Jerry's. That's because the turtle choked on the nuts. I had a stupid name, Peanut Turtle. I was like, like who, who thought of this? Peanut um, shells, turtle shells. That's what it called. I would have called it turtle shells. No? It it didn't even, I don't even remember it having anything to do with, like, peanuts and uh, whatever. <laughs> it was good ice cream, though. Was there parts of turtle meat in there? Maybe. No, there wasn't. I think um, real turtle. Let's see. Dragon Majesty says... He's still drinking Pepsi. Good man. We're both drinking Pepsi. Cheers, my friend. You can't see me, but I'm holding up my Pepsi. Cheers. Um, Speaking of. What are, you, what are you drinking? Mountain Dew. Oh. Oh, I got some Mountain Dew, too. Walmart had the... Um, had the I'm not drinking it right now, but they had the uh, melon, the new Melon Dew. Oh, I, I see that, and I walk by every single time. I'm just like, no. It's 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 not that good, unless you like super love watermelon. 
like not even like real watermelon, like watermelon candy flavor. Like if you've ever had sour watermelon candy and you like that, then you probably like this. I like watermelon. I just don't like anything that's flavored watermelon flavored. Yeah, I love actual watermelon, but (laughs) but the the candy flavor watermelon, it's not disgusting. I can drink it, but I'm not going to buy it again. Like I was like, every other Mountain Dew flavor is better than this. And they don't sell them, and that pisses me off. You go to the store. I don't know what it is, man. In Colorado, you go to the stores, and you get every freaking soda on the planet. And they come back to California. I'm in San Diego, one of the biggest cities in the country. And there's like, here's the Mountain Dew. You're lucky. You're lucky if they have a different flavor like than the main. I'm like, <sighs> bastards. <laughs> uh, let's see. Geek. Hero Bubba says, saying hi real quick. Have a lot going on at work this week. I probably missed him. Sorry about that, Geek Hero. If you're hearing me, then that's great. And if you're not, I'm sorry I took so long to get to your get to wow. your chat. Dude, uh, you can blame Vankman. He's here to be a scapegoat, he, he, and I'm going to use him. And you can blame Ashford not showing you the variant cover of this book. Holy crap, is it way better than that. Oh, it, I didn't know there was a variant cover. I just, I just marvel.com. I just click it. Here's a variant. I'm like, here's like variant covers back then too. I guess. Well, see, this is the advantage that you have when you're not piloting the ship. You have your hands free. You can do all this stuff. I got to like make sure everything is going and I don't blow this thing up. Yeah. I, I got to make sure that you don't crash it. Cause that's my life too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh my God. Ronnie says covers are supposed to sell the book. This wouldn't for me. Well, Maranya. I, I, she 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 needs some ice cream. I, she's a little salty tonight. Um, this would sell it for me because Saad Rabik is a fantastic artist. Wait till we get inside the book. Um, so what I gather this is 2012. Yeah, it's Marvel Now era 2012. Um, they're praising the art. Must be better on the inside. I don't know if it's better go. on the inside because it's not going to be if as you wanna- finished. But it, it's good. I just posted on Discord in the live stream tab. If you want to click on it, you can share it. Oh, now I gotta go hunting around. Hunting around. Hunting around. I don't know how to share. If can't... you just get, four, if you just get six more. No, you need to. I. Oh wait, I can. Click on it. Yeah, but it I opens it up. Uh, yeah, it'll open up, but I won't be able to. Hmm. Oh. How do I? I can figure this out. I can do this. I just got to put it in the right browser so everyone can see and they can judge for themselves. Uh, I think this has a better composition, but it's not, uh, the art is not better. Well, it's more of an action pose. It is. Like and I said, the composition. And, it, and, it, and, it, and his guns are gone. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nearly as, as great of art, you know. Uh, at least he's holding the th- he's holding the hammer correctly though. Uh, he's holding the hammer oh. correctly in the other one too. There's not. He was she he was pulling off a sheath, like a sword. Well, the other he, one. He's the only problem I see with this is that no matter where he falls, he's going to be impaled. <laughs> That's the only problem I see with this. But I don't know. I think that's more of an action. You're right. No, I the composition of this yeah. is, is better. I 100% yeah. agree. But when you go back and you look at this, I mean, this is just so much better of just straight. <laughs> I, it's not illustration. It's like a paint. Like It's more. What would you call this? It's more like realistic or it looks closer to. Now, this is Daniel Acuna, A-C-U-N-A doing the cover artist for this the variants yeah i would not have bought that i would have i would have bought this one i think Although I the probably... variant doesn't have that stupid red stripe so i hate this that red stripe i well look at the marvel one is up in the very top now if you look at the variants that's crazy let's see ff2 says hella is thor's niece okay yeah i thought it was different in the mcu it's his sister yeah um, like i said look it's the MCU is about as fake as pretty much as a uh, Hawkeye's family. You no, know, they're they, they don't exist. <laughs> it's, it's like, 
Uh, my goodness. It's as, it's as fake as Kate Bishop is as Hawkeye. Um, no, no, she is a real Hawkeye. Rusty Deo's in what? the house. He says, good day. Um, and Jimmy has finally showed up. Look at that. Jimmy's here. He's all excited. He's been here. We just we just took it forever to get to this chat. <laughs> oh, man, I, I am, I'm trying to get through this. Always hear Tim Daly as the voice of Superman. Says Dominic. Uh, one of them here, Susan Iber. Okay, you guys, you guys are all the voice actor. I'm not the cartoon generation, so I don't identify with you guys. Ronnie says I'm calling him almost Thor because he doesn't look like a heroic Thor to me. He he does too. Gosh, quit sucking on those lemons. Um, how it drops. At least the guns are loaded. Uh, don't don't miss arm day. Melissa's in the house. Welcome, Melissa. You should, it's a little late for you. Um, let's see. Rook says, holy crap, Ash is reading. The art is perfect. Anyone who disagrees is wrong. Oh, there's a typical Jimmy. Um, it's not perfect. Um, but anyways. Um Doug Johnson, not a fan of this artist. I think he's on the current Eternals comic now, if I'm not mistaken. You are not mistaken. He is on the current Eternals comic, and he's not even know kind of phoning it in. <laughs> that is not a good <laughs> example. I, I flipped through that. I was going to get the new Eternals comic. I was like, oh, yeah, Sauter Beak's doing it. I want to, I'd never read Eternals before, I would, and then I kind of flipped through it, and I was like, ugh. This, this is, like, really – not sloppy, it just feels phoned in. And I was like, oh, come on, Asad, you've done better. And that's the thing, too. It's like, you get excited for a book, but then you see, you see who's writing, it's like, oh. But the, then you look at the art's great, or it's the quite opposite. You love the writer, then you look at the artist, it's like... Yeah, who's it just really puts, new, a, puts who's a damper on everything. Eternals comic? Someone, I, I don't think the artist or the writer was someone bad. No. Um, um, let me look it up. Oh gosh, why does Comixology have to be such a pain? I typed in Eternals, and the first result is Eternal, second result is Eternity, third result is actually Eternals. There, there was one from 2019. Oh, look at this. It's already on Unlimited. <laughs> I can already just read these books on Unlimited. Yeah, Eternals Complete Saga. Came out in 2020. Right. No, this is the new one. So you can see. Here's the saw you got some solder beat cover. There, are, there it is. And I was like, okay. oh yeah. Oh yeah, Kyron Gillen is writing it. So oh, he's cool. the guy that's, you know, doing the he does the die book. He's doing um Once in Future. A lot of people <laughs> love Kyron Gillen. And I was like, Asad Rabik? I was like, yeah, sign me up. And then I opened it up and I was like, uh, you know, it's not like it's bad art. But it, when you've seen what he's capable of doing, you're just like, yeah, this feels a little, a little phoned in. And then uh, I read some reviews or watched some reviews on it, and it, I was like, okay, I'm glad I didn't pick this up. Especially, it's also a five dollar book. Some of these covers have cheesecake on them, but I doubt the interior does. That probably brings down the price. You should always keep your food away from your comics. And then, and then we get the issue four, the floating head. Hell, uh, issue five has another floating head. Six has a floating head. The floating heads are back. Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, All number right. four has number four has the Hans variant. It's a one twenty-five. It has Thanos on his throne floating. In this, in and you were just land you were just off on another land. You were like I'm a, I'm you're like the a dog comment. from Up. That's what <laughs> that's what you are. Like, I'm a, no, I want, I, want, shiny. I want the, I want the League, Comic Geeks. League Comic Geeks, bro. It shows all different covers, Eternals, because I, I want to see. it does. I know. Screw <laughs> <laughs> your comicsology. I love League Comic Geeks. <laughs> uh, well, comicsology, the reason I use the comicsology is because I can um, show a couple of the pages of the inside art, yeah. which I can't do on League of Comic Geeks. Um, no. So... Yeah, um, Jimmy says the art is perfect. It's good. Yeah. I don't know about perfect, but that's that's the weird thing though. I look at the, look at this book though for the Eternals number one, a lot, yeah. a lot of uh, even, even number two through four, the variants which are like you're paying forty bucks for are the better covers. 
but then again well oftentimes yeah that's one of the things that pisses me off about marvel is the incentive variants yep. are the best covers and i'm like your your best cover should be the a cover like why am i getting a floating head or a, a headshot you know oh, or or the one that looks like it's came out of the what is it, the gala x-men gala or that you know like a fashion show <laughs> Yeah, that new Doom series. Uh, I I normally don't get. I've I don't ever, rarely do I ever get incentive variants because I think they're kind of a rip off. But there's that new Doctor Doom series, um, which I I didn't know was gonna suck because I didn't know Christopher Cantwell sucked. And one of my viewers at the time had said, "Oh my God, Ash, you like Doctor Doom." The new series is written by this guy, Christopher Cantwell. He wrote this TV show that I like. He's great. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Awesome. I love Dr. Doom. It's a great recommendation. I'm going to pick it up. And so I was all excited. And um, they had a really, one of my favorite covers was one of the variants. Here it is right here. I'll show you. This was the variant cover that I got. And I just love this. It's a, I think it's Mike Diodato. I'm not really a oh, fan of oh. otherwise, but just look at this cover. I gotta wait eight seconds on delay. I on gotta the wait eight seconds. I got. I should put it up in the um. In the in the share screen there, here, there so you goes. can see my stuff live. Yeah. Um. This cover. So I paid ten bucks. It wasn't a super yeah, I, expensive variant cover. I was the one I was reading it, but I don't. I don't think I said it was great, though. I, I said no, 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 it wasn't you. Like, it was some someone yeah. I don't even know. It was, I just said there was a scene in one of the things where you see Doom or running on a freaking grizzly bear. The no, there was, there was no one here. This was like a, <laughs> over a year ago. It was just in one of the comments on one of my videos, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, cool." Like this is well before I knew who Cantwell, and I was like all excited. I was so excited that I was like, "I'm gonna splurge ten bucks to get this cover because I." This is probably my favorite Doctor Doom cover ever of any Doctor Doom comic. I was just like, I love this cover, um, so I splurged, and it was like ten bucks. So yeah, yep. it wasn't like tons of money. And then I read it, and I was so pissed. I was like, I'm not getting the rest of the series. Screw! <laughs> I, was, I was like, damn you. Um, and then of course later on, he would write Iron Man way worse, and I would be like, oh yeah, that this Cantwell guy. Um, so. Cookies are done. Cookies are done. Uh, Sweet. Now, of course, Marania likes the Eternals art better. All right, good night, guys. Our cookies are done. We gotta go. <laughs> just, of course, <laughs> of course, that's just the way that it is. Um, let's see, Thor is one of Asad Rubik's better works. I agree. Um, just the. Just frame the book, Ash. Never open Doom again. Yeah, I'm never going to... I've never actually opened up that book, period. I just read a digital copy of it. Um, so it's... I bought it. It was already bagged. It's never come out of the bag. It's never... I've. It's never touched my fingers. Um, Probably the best see. way. Marvel Conan sale. Oh, you darn you, Maestro. I'm really excited to... I, I, I'm almost tempted to go back into that series. I'm looking at what's coming out this week, and it has Doom on the cover. Marvel Secret War sale. I always got to check to see if there's anything big going on, because sometimes they have retardedly good sales. Um, you just You just have to be there at the right time. Oh. And it does not look like... Uh, any retardedly good sales at the moment? Oh, so, oh wah, wah. I'm just looking at what's coming out this week, and I think I'm only getting three books. Well, this is pretty good. They did a compendium of Saga, so you can get the first. I think it's like 50 issues of Saga if, if it's up your alley. Thir 1,321 pages. <laughs> 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 ah, that's huge. Um. Saga one through fifty four for twenty one fifty nine. That's a good price. So I was at the comic book store today. We're gonna get to the book in a second. I know I said it half an hour, but it always goes a little longer when I got a co host. I gotta give you know some time for Bankman. Uh, I was at the comic book store today. I thought about you because I saw Conan. Have you looked through that Sumerian comic? I read the first two issues digitally. 
I'm going to go back and pick them up. It's I was surpressed. The art is it wasn't nice. cheesecake. I I thought it was gonna be cheesecake. Well, it's but you know what? Man. It's I I'm, well, no, but I like the fact that it's action an Ed Burrow story. They're yeah, just yeah, yeah. Twist. My my understanding so, is there are adaptions of Robert E. Howard's novels. Yeah, um, I said is, they're not really cool. they're not cha- authentic. they're not changing any words. They're not putting any propaganda or anything in it. They're just putting art to it. Yeah, I flipped through the book. Those comics are really nice. Like the pages are really nice. The art is like the coloring is real bright. I was like, this is a quality book. Like this is way better than what Marvel's putting out. By the way, this is what Marvel's <laughs> putting out. Hey, speaking of Asad Rubik, I bet you this is an Asad Rubik cover right here. Uh, uh, looks like looks like it, but yep, covered by Asad Rubik. This is what it looks like on the outside. This is what it looks like on the inside. Eh, it's, the interior is good. It's kind terrible. of like dynamite. Not, not bad for for a Marvel comic these days. It's it's close to similar to dynamite. Not as good Level as up. the Sumerian book, though. A Sumerian book. Yeah, I was I was impressed. Um, so anyone who is into Conan, check out the Sumerian by I don't even know who is the publisher. Um, it's not. Is that that maybe would have been like, uh, not American comics, whatever it was. There was there was one of them. Um. Let's look. Last week, we pulled up. All right, we don't want to go too deep in a rabbit hole on this though, because we do have. I still, th- I still think you should be reading the Runaways. Yeah, no. Um. <laughs> uh, what was that? The other thing. Oh, you weren't on the show the other night. Um, the the indie comic show. Mm-hmm. There's a comic you need to read. Have you read Erratic? Heard of it? Okay, you never need to read it. And a, and a blaze is the company you're thinking of for this. Yeah, a blaze, a blaze. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to bring this up again. We, t- Jimmy was on last night. We were talking about it. Um, I went. I did a big old spiel on erratic. I'm probably gonna <laughs> do a video on it. You need to read it because it's it's the best Spider-Man book out right now. It's it might be the best Spider Man book in twenty years. Is it Spider Man? It's, it's not Spider Man, unfortunately. It's a character <laughs> who's highly inspired by Spider Man. Um <laughs> even more than Sideways was. Um but if you just read the book and imagine this character, the main character is like a Peter Parker, it's you're just gonna the whole time you read it, you're gonna be like, "Oh my God, this is what Marvel should be doing. This should be how Spider-Man is. It's so good, and I I, I think it's so good. It really is. No, I I <laughs> how do you spell it? E dash e- Radic. Okay, That's... um, and it's the art is good, the writing is phenomenal. It's not like a super deep comic. Um, it's it's not like a mind bender. It's not, but it's just it reminds me of the classic Stanley Spider Mans, but like in a modern sense. Like if you if you took those Silver Age Spider Mans and you brought them to the future, and wrote those stories with a modern voice, and not modern okay, as a stupid voice like bad like w- w- well done it's it's so fun and it's you're gonna just be flipping pages grinning ear to ear and you're gonna just gonna be like kicking yourself and being like damn it marvel th- how is this little studio awa studios kicking your ass and and writing oh, the cover is not the colors are pretty cool. They're it's, really, really popping with the pink and the blue color, blue is, and red. It is so. And then that, yeah, everything that you liked. I mean, yeah. this like this, go back to Spider Man era, like when he was, when he was at a, when he was dating Gwen Stacy or trying to date Gwen yeah. Stacy, like that era of Spider Man. That's what this book reminds me of. Um, oh, I'm reading right now. He's 15 years old. And he gets granted incredible powers, but he can only use it for like 15 minutes or 10 yeah, minutes yeah. at a time. Yeah. And it's. So don't read it now. I mean, 
I didn't want that. No, it just seems like it, it's it's it seems like yeah, like he took the cut like the the. the for our man, where you can only you can only fight Cram for an hour and then his powers wear off. Yeah, but but like you only can do it for ten minutes, so yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's cool, man. <laughs> it is. I want to talk to you more off air about it because I don't want to just dominate the whole show tonight about about that. I talked it's, enough about it yesterday. It's so it's, it's hilarious. So I saw you give it five stars. I did, and <laughs> I, for I completely like different reasons. <laughs> Like most of the time, I give five star books. They're books like East of West and, um, you know, heavy books. Um, this is not one of those, but it's not supposed to be. Sometimes a book is just meant to be a fun, youthful sort of coming of age story. Is Very lighthearted. That's what this book is. The villains are like cartoony, but in a good way. Like oh. I, d- I can't pray. I'm going to, I'm going to sit here and talk all night about this book. I don't want to, I just want to bring it up to you because I know you didn't get to uh, yeah. attend the yeah. show. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look at it. Definitely. Up. It'll be up. All right. So that being said, I'm going to read the first issue of God of thunder. Lord help me. Um, all right. Let's see. As long, as long as your dog's quiet, you'll be fine. The beat guard style is too stiff for me when reading the comics, in my opinion. I feel like the characters are lacking the emotion that needs to be conveyed in the art. Good Lord, is everyone just such a hard critic? You, man, you get art like this, and you criticize it, and then you get normal modern Marvel art. People are like, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, uh, all right. Like I said, I'm, I'm still liking like, the Black Widow art on there and stuff. and you know, It's a different story, but... I, I'm not a big Kelly Thompson fan, but I've been liking where it's been going. So, so we'll figure it out. Let's uh, let's see how let's see how good this book is. I have never read this book. Never read this book. I am not a professional voice actor. Uh, as you can see, the font's a little weird, and I'm going to be reading panel by panel. So sometimes it's difficult to see who's talking, so I mess things up. I'm going to do my best, but as always, you want you, you want I'll, I'll take. I'll take some rolls and I'll just give him an Arnold Boyd. <laughs> you just get to know. No Arnold Boyd. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> I don't want Thor with an Arnold voice. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is Ash on Comics reading the greatest Thor story ever told, according to Jimmy. Let's, let's get it on. 893 AD. Earth. The western coast of Iceland. The frost giant had terrorized these people for weeks. It had eaten three goats, four dogs, and two children. The mothers in the village prayed for help from the gods, and help they did receive. I led a group of twenty men, tracking the giant to its den in the highlands. It battled us for hours, swinging trees and hurling boulders. Many Vikings found their way to Valhalla, until my axe hacked its guts to bloody slush and lopped off its head. That was four days ago. Since then, I have eaten more goats than the frost giant, drank enough mead to drown a dozen sailors, and made love to half the women in the village. I am Thor Odinson, god of thunder, prince of Asgard, heir to the throne of the realm eternal. I love my life. Ah! A cry in the night. Please let it be another giant. There's someone in the water. A devil man. I saw his face. The girl speaks the truth. There's someone there, all right. Or at least what's left of them. Red chunks have been washing up for hours now, all along the shore. Poor bastard. Must have fallen off a ship and been torn apart on the rocks. Is he from our village? No. 
It could have been my father for all I know. There's not enough left of the fool to tell much of anything. Not so. I can tell you one thing for certain. He was not from our village. I have heard tell of feathered men such as this from Norsemen who claim to have sailed on across the sea toward the edge of the world. Oh, you're half right, Ulfar, son of Orn. Our visitor is indeed from across the water, but I do not believe he is a man at all. Lord Thor, pray tell. What do you see when you look into those eyes? He was a god. A god? Odin's beard. But what could have done this to a god? Even a heathen one from across the sea. Must have been a sea serpent. Only thing it could have been. Look at that flesh. There's not, not a bite on him. He wasn't eaten. He was butchered. What in all the nine worlds can butcher a god? Whatever it was, I guarantee you its skull is no match for Asgardian steel. Come now, Norsemen. Why stand here? Wait, sorry. Come now, Norsemen. Why stand we here with the dead when you've a longhouse filled with cold mead and warm women? Thor, for one, has yet to drink his fill of either. Boy. Fetch some wood. Enough to build a funeral pyre. A butchered god. Tell me, my lord. Have you ever seen anything such as this? I've seen war in the heavens. I've seen gods suffer and bleed. I've seen immortal fathers subject their own sons to torments you could never imagine. I've seen hell itself, but no. I've never seen anything like the horror in this god's eyes. To what gods do you pray, old woman? All of them. The present day, deep space, the planet Indigar. I've, I've never prayed before, so I'm not exactly sure how to do this, but here goes. Dear Thor, my people need your help. It hasn't rained on my planet for many years. Everything here has died. Soon, we will die too. Everyone throughout the spaceways says you're the greatest god who's ever lived and that you can do anything. Please, Thor, save us. Raccoon. I hear the prayer from a universe away, across the cosmos. I bring with me the storm. Barroom. I crack the ground till water gushes forth. I carve rivers where once was desert. I am Thor, warrior of Asgard, avenger of Earth. And I swear by all that is holy, no one will die here today. came i never dreamed you actually would i heard your prayer little one and what kind of god would i be if i did not answer prayers now if you'll excuse me there is always someone somewhere in need of smiting with a very large hammer and thor is always happy to oblige please stay we haven't much but what we have is yours 
our cooks do wondrous things with rock worm and scab bark, and we brew the finest cave slime ale in all the system. I am sorry, but I simply must... Did you say ale? So there I was, riding a chariot, pulled by flying goats, with three hundred angry storm giants in pursuit, and me laughing all the while. When at last I'd crossed the rainbow bridge and beheld the most beautiful sight in all the nine realms. Asgard. Golden city of the gods, where all Father Odin and noble Queen Frigga together ruled the heavens, surrounded by an army of the bravest warriors to ever have hefted a sword. Are there dragons there too? Dragons? Oh, yes, sometimes. Plus elves and dwarves and the occasional troll or two. But mostly just gods. The finest gods who've ever lived. More gods than there are stars in the sky. Sleep soundly, young one. May the eyes of Asgard be ever upon you. We owe you our lives, Lord Thor. You owe the girl. It was her prayer that brought me here. But tell me, Elder, why did she not pray to her own gods? Her own gods? I don't understand. Here on Indigar, we have no gods. No gods? In all my travels, I have never known a world without gods. When I was a child, my mother told me stories of gods from long ago who lived in a jewel city high in the clouds. But those were just stories for children, like the ones you told about your dragons and magic rainbows. Well, there was a time I might have killed you for an insult such as that, old man. I save your world and you dare doubt me? I, I meant no offense, my lord. I just thought... Do you mean to tell me there really are rainbow bridges and flying goats and that your father truly does sit on a throne of heaven? My lord? Let us speak no more of my father. Tell the girl when Thor finds her wayward gods... He will see that they come home. A world without gods. With such a myriad of pantheons spread across the cosmos, I never dreamed such a thing possible. As it turns out, it is not. Indeed, there was a time this world had gods. So what then has become of them? Oh, Sky Lords of Indigar, a fellow immortal comes in peace. Show yourselves. Nothing, nothing in the air but echoes and dust. I find a treasure room filled with mountains of gold, untouched for many years, and an arsenal still stocked with all manner of weapons, swords rusting in their scabbards, but no gods. In their library are countless scrolls filled with tales of the ruthless and powerful warriors who once called this sky castle home. Yet I find no sign of war or disaster, no trace of anything, living or dead. No clue at all what became of them. A mystery for another day, I suppose. I am ready to leave this city to its ghosts. When I happen to notice one last building. A storage house, by the looks of it. I don't even consider it worth checking. 
until I noticed the chains. No other door in the city bore chains. Crum. I realize why this one does as soon as the smell hits me. Hogscar the Harsh, Crosskin the Cruel, Lady Vile the Goddess of Atrocities, Lord Allblood the Inexorable and his thirteen sons by thirteen brides. I recognize them all from the stories in the scrolls. These are the missing gods of Indigar. Thus is one mystery solved as another is born. An entire pantheon of fearsome immortals, every man, woman, and child, all butchered like animals in their own fortress, without any signs of invasion or warfare, without any sign of combat of any kind. No, to even call this butchery is an insult to honest butchers. This, this was something else entirely. God flesh rots slowly. By my guess, they've been here a few hundred years, undisturbed until now. No army did this, no giants either, no stench of sorcery in the air. This was no ritual, no one-time explosion of madness. Flesh wasn't eaten, so neither was it a mindless beast. And there was nothing mindless about this. Their deaths were skillfully prolonged, their suffering relished. This was the work of one hand, one that was steady and accomplished, and extremely well versed in its art. There's a variety to the wounds, the work of many different weapons, but no sign of a single one. Meaning the killer carries with them. Sorry, meaning the killer carries them with them like a carpenter with his toolbox. This was far from the first time he'd killed, and unless he stopped far from the last, the face of a god, frozen forever in agony and terror. I haven't seen anything like this since... since... Oh, hell. Shing! Coom. It attacks like an animal. No skill, only fury. This is not my killer. This is his guard dog. His very strong guard dog. Boom. I remember a day a millennium ago. A dead god floating in the sea, and later a winged horse drenched in blood, a cave of horrors. I know who did this. Boof. If Gore the god butcher yet lives, it can only mean one thing. More gods are sure to die. Many millennia from now, the Great Hall of Asgard. The quiet, that's what I hate the most. The wretched, unending quiet of this place. This hall used to be filled with the noise of battle, of feasting. Now there's just the shuffle of those things out there, mocking me with their blackened silence, and the soft labored breathing of a tired old god. Damn this quiet. If I am to die, it will be with a weapon in my hand and a roar in my throat. 
Bring me my arm. No answer. I'm so damn old I keep forgetting there's no one left. No one left but me. I am Thor Odinson, king of a broken Asgard, last of all the gods. And today I will try yet again to see Valhalla. I vaguely remember how this started so long ago with a dead god floating in the sea. Whack! And later a little girl's prayer on a world without gods. Come, dogs, there is still one god left in Asgard, and he would have words with thee. And now this is how it ends, with blood and thunder, with hammer and sword, with one last stand at the gates of heaven. The Odin sword is drawn. The end of all things is nigh. Death to the butcher of gods and his black berserkers. Death to the enemy of Asgard. Whatever happens now, whatever my fate, know that I face it like a god. To be continued. Hmm. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. I don't understand why Thor only had one arm because of Jason Aaron. <laughs> the destroyer arm. Because I, I, I remember reading about that, like, you know, but I realized that started here, though, in the storyline. Well, yeah, because this is Thor of the future. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to give that four stars. That's good. Good book. Not a fan of him uh, giving him an eye patch and bringing his arm. Just like just like I wasn't a fan of uh, Uncle Man with a hook for an hand. Well, this is a future. This is this is Thor. At the I, end I, of I, all I, things. I know, I know. I just I just never was a fan of like that when people would do that. I'm not character. a fan of him doing that present. Um. That's what Jason Aaron eventually did, and then Donny Cates yeah. had to sort of undo it all. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, but I'm cool with like a future, like well, yeah, that's... yeah, this is, yeah. This is I treat this as, as an Elseworld thing. But uh, I mean, no, it's technically canon. Be, yeah, yeah, it is canon now. But um, my Thor ended with the <laughs> after the after siege. <laughs> that's it. All right, where was I? Let's see. I, I learned to type in the chat now. <laughs> to type in the chat when I start reading <laughs> so I can know where to scroll up to. It's like my bookmark. I saw that. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Moranya says, okay, now this is some awesome art. And then Dragon Ball's like, decent art. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, RDB says, I like watching through Discord. The words aren't cut off. You don't need I the words. You can, I'm reading to you. I, I know, but I like reading along too. <laughs> it's, it's like well, you're because yeah, that... you're you're listening live, so you would hear on a delay. Well, even if I wasn't though, I, I like on my phone or whatever, it, it, it when it when it does a little crop thing, it crops the words off too. So you don't you know I mean I'm there for the art, but I mean it's like I don't know. It's like having an audio book, and then you, you but you only have like half the page. You know what I mean? I see, but I don't know. It's it's cool that I get to see like your like your the whole entire background, like the back behind the scenes. I can see your browser. <laughs> yeah, you can see my browser. Um, <laughs> Find your phone. <laughs> Actually, this phone currently. Oh, and, uh, yeah, that's real quick. If you don't know, if you have a if you have a uh, Android phone, Google has a. You can just do a, just type in find your phone. Google has yep. a thing where it'll like locate it. You can you can lock your phone, you can wipe it, or you can just have it ring. So yeah. you know, like a lot of times, find like, damn it, where's my phone? It's like click on this and well, it, it starts beeping so I can find it. It's cool. I've had it because I had because I had that problem all the time because mine's in a black outer case. I thought about getting a bright neon orange one. It's like they see it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. When I have a I have a slim case for it that's black, but I recently it's... switched it to I have a white otter case. Um, and the, the being that's... the white helps. It gets dirty though, doesn't it? What's that? That's doesn't it get dirty fast though? Like you know, it gets like you know, like you get those your nice white shoes and they get then they get scuffed real easily. No, I don't like roll around in the dirt with my phone. If you drop it, if you've been sit down something. Yeah, I mean, I don't like set it in like dirt. And besides, Greasy you, can hands. Clean, you, you know, you can clean them, right? You can put. Um, I I keep pretty good. Con I I keep my phone in really good condition, actually. Um, yeah, my phone's my phone's good. It's outer case. It gets really freaking dirty. Let's see. Uh, RDB says Washington. Just, okay, I already talked to you about that. Uzab <laughs> is it? Is Uzab? I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Haven't seen you in a while, my friend. He says Ricardo Federici is like the new B-rated Rabik. Okay, I could I could see that. Um, Dragon it's Ball says the art bad. is simple yet captivating. Okay, some of these panels, the art looks very rushed. You can tell where he had more time to fully realize the figures and faces. Man, you are harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I could be the, the, Rasad Rabik is one of the best artists in the business right now and you <laughs> Ronnie's like it's not good enough um let's see let's all laugh at Ash's narrating skills <laughs> how do you choose though when you went to the old guy how do you choose to go to like the weird vo voice I don't know so like, I just <laughs> make shit up on the fly sometimes whenever, whenever there's an old guy he's got do a little voice now the most important see here's the thing is like I only have a small repertoire of voices that I can do <laughs> and the important thing about voices is I'm not a professional voice actor so I'm not trying to sell a product like I'm just trying to make it so you can differentiate between who's talking just by giving them a different sounding voice even if it's not a good voice it just you can because if you're maybe halfway paying attention or whatever then you're not following along the word balloons. If I just have the same voice carry over, you may not realize that a different character started talking. So, yeah, the importance I, is to just have the contrast of voices. See, I would have, the old guy, I would have thrown like the old prospect here, you know, voice in there. Just, yeah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Get all <laughs> Thor comic. <laughs> like, here, I'm your old prospector. Yes, I found the gold. I found the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Liven it up a little bit. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, ready to watch Thor fight? It's not all talk, right? Man, Dragon Ball just does not like talking or drama. He just wants. He's probably. He, he's he probably, wants dude, he's smash. Probably, Hulk smash. He's probably. I'm surprised he's still here because he was playing that Friday the 13th game with his friend. So. <laughs> oh yeah, well, he's probably doing both. <laughs> it's like, he's um, back to playing the game now. <laughs> No action, but okay art. So so story so far, my opinion. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can't have entirety of action. Action is meaningless if you don't have a story that leads up to it and have a point to it. So I'm sure I'm sure we're gonna get action. Um, probably the, the probably the best part part of this entire story is with the giant chains I and mean, then just smashing going through. Yeah, because like even Ronnie brings it up, it's like Thor. Those chains are there for a reason, <laughs> right? That's what I was thinking too. I was I was reading it. I was like. You dumbass. Like, I was thinking there's going to be some, like, monster inside. Don't dead inside. <laughs> it's like, it's like walking dead. Uh, uh, let's see. Ooh, I, I like that picture of Thor. He looks ticked off when they mention his father. Oh, yeah. So, Marani's saying there's a change for a reason. Uh, let's see. Jimmy says, are you going to read the whole story, all 11 issues? Um, oh, is God Butcher 11 issues? God Butcher is only five issues. Oh, is it? There's yeah. the sequel story is the God Bomb. I don't actually know, Jimmy. This is like a 25-issue fucking series. So yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm not going to read all 25 issues, so I'm just going to read until it feels like I should stop. I know another story starts with like an issue 18, and there's a giant and a big number one on it again, which is confusing if you're picking it up. Oh, it was like 15 or 18, and all of a sudden there's like a giant number one again. I was like, that's a new story. Yeah, figures. Dragon Magic, she says, definitely an interesting story so far. Pretty good. Uh, Jimmy says, it's amazing what happened when people listen to Jimmy for once. As if no one listens to Jimmy. I read fucking like 40 issues of Superman because I listened to you and Jimmy. 
Who's Jimmy? Um, I read Ultimate Spider Man because of Jimmy. I re- I was I listen to Jimmy. The problem is, is Jimmy doesn't get the results that he wants typically. Um, you gotta so, pay to play. Yeah, I mean, I even started reading his event, the Jason Aaron Avengers, because of Jimmy, and I was like, I can't go any further. I'm sorry, I had to pull the parachute. And, <laughs> and the new one, the current one that's going on. Ooh, ooh, I would have went for like past. Yeah, but I mean, well, this was a couple. This was like two years ago. I want to say. I mean, it was been a while back, and it was like Jimmy's favorite comic. So I was like, I'll try it out. And I was like, "Ooh, this is well before Jason went way off a cliff." And now, <laughs> now I'm like, "Yeah, good thing I didn't continue with that." Um, but I just, I, you know, I just, I yeah, I don't like. I'm not a Jason. This I will say though, Jimmy. To your credit, I always try to be honest. I'm an open-minded. To your credit, this is better than anything I've ever read Jason Aaron do, <laughs> for sure. So that's good. I don't like. I don't think I've read anything by him before. But... Um, no, you didn't read other, Val- other than like Valkyries? other than. No, but I read yeah, Avengers read forty. Valkyrie, so if that's my, if that's his worst, me can only go up. Oh. I don't know what his worst is, but everything well, that I've I, encountered the, like, uh, the Phoenix, the, the current of Phoenix oh, thing. Yeah, one that Avengers. was terrible. That's rock bottom. So I mean, Ooh. anything I better than, anything's better than that. It's going up. You know so. what's weird is I read this. And I'm like, what happened? Like, the I guy who's writing this, work. I would never guess is the same guy who wrote the Phoenix Tournament. Like, this like is I said, I think day. Marvel, Marvel getting on you. After a while working there, they pretty much just replace you and just keep the name. <laughs> it's, that's what it seems like. This whole entire time, time Frank Miller has been awesome, but it's not, it's not him writing, though. They just someone else is using his pen name. We'll pay you a million dollars to use your pen name. But we'll Jimmy, see. Jim, I, I, I made Jimmy a little irate. He says, "Don't question my knowledge of this series. It is eleven issues, not a sequel, one story." Well, I'm not We're questioning your knowledge, Jimmy. I'm just saying what Marvel has marketed it. The, the first trade is called the God Butcher. It's five issues, one through five, and then the second trade is the God Bomb. And it's six through eleven. So you're saying it's you still here? I hear you. Oh shit! That's okay. brutal. I thought it was now my um my USB port on my laptop's loose, and if I just touch it, it like jiggles and it cuts my mic out. Karma. Never been a problem until recently. I don't know what happened, but anyways, moving on. <laughs> no one cares. I blame myself. I'm here to scapegoat. <laughs> Damn it, Vardy V, what'd you do to my laptop? Telekinesis. So I guess I guess we're gonna be here for eleven fucking issues. I'm just kidding. Um I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what good goes. If it's good, it's keeping everyone everyone's everyone's liking it so far, so we're gonna go. I'm here to please. If everyone's having a good time enjoying the story, then we'll go. Uh we'll find a way to make it work. Um I I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, which I had a feeling I would. I mean, everyone says good things about this series. I love the art. The art is definitely helping Jason Aaron, um, but it's 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 not reliant. This was still would have been a good story even without the art. But I like this cover so, better. Uh, Do you like this cover better? Uh, let me look back. Yeah, I guess it's pretty good. The guy on the left, though. Uh, what is he from? What is this, it a new villain or is it, this? This is the God Butcher. He's, he, I've seen him in another, another uh, comic book company or something like that before. At face with the hood, it reminds me of not the sod, is it? It's the guy who works with the uh, or no, who's who's the guy who works with Thanos in the hood with the gray face and uh, Thanos is is a group of soldiers. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, those guys. Yeah. A, a, he was in, I think he was Infinity going against. Yeah, uh, I know who you're talking. That's reminds of when I see that. Yeah, it kind of does. He also reminds me of Kindred. A little bit too, yes. 
What the was this a, was this a gate like a gate or what do they call those like a gateway drug? No, the covers like when they combine. A collage? No, when you oh, like. I don't, oh, oh, I don't know. Because look, the issue number one. Look, this is this is the cloak right here on the on the right hand side of of the issue. You can see the Thor's cloak because Odin was on the left hand side of the page before, like his face is cut off. I think these issues like combined together to make one big um it might ask jimmy jimmy's the expert on this with question his knowledge yeah jimmy would know um i bet you this is a like three at least a, a uh, what do you call it there's a like, term for it when you put the covers together a puzzle <laughs> it's not a puzzle <laughs> you're useless <laughs> Doug Johnson says the Black one. Order. That's what you're thinking of. Jimmy says one through three covers are combined. Yeah. So they make a poster. Yeah, there's a term that they call that when you when the covers do that. Marketing. No, there's a. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy all three issues if you want that cover. Well. Yeah, I like it when they do it over three issues. I hate when they do it as like variants of the same issue. Like you they, buy all the, the, the that's a variant so you can get build a poster. <laughs> they did that with Justice League twenty five. I was so pissed. Had this beautiful cover, but it was like three covers like they made it over three issues. But instead of doing like twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, it was just twenty twenty five issue cover A, B, and C. And I'm like, you gotta buy this fucking three times to get the whole cover. <laughs> like do a gatefold, <laughs> like fold out cover. Like if you're this that's I was pissed. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it shows it how it's like the issue two goes to the left, and it looks and it looks like um. Yeah, I bet you issue three goes to the right. Must. And this is, I'm guessing, this is probably going to capture like the three eras of Thor because this Thor on the cover here is past Thor, right? He doesn't have Mjolnir; he just got his axe. He's younger. The Thor that was on cover number one is probably like current modern era thor it just throws me off when i see that giant battle axe i'm thinking like is this unworthy thor no this is old it's... this is like early thor like before yeah before marvel yeah it just throws me off when i see whenever i see that giant battle axe i think of unworthy thor which which happened around somewhere around this these years no we got you know un no, unworthy like... thor doesn't happen until jane foster comes and I know, but I, I was sure this was part of that series. Perfects Mjolnir. Mjolnir Dragon Ball is Mjolnir's Dragon Ball. perfect. It right, will so. be when it's wielded by a woman. All right, so what do you leave on the comments? I'll quickly read them. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, they're complaining about action. Dragon Ball. Oh, sorry, Dragon Ball talks. So there's no action uh, or decent action. Jimmy says there's more to the story than just action. Asha Comics, are you going to read the whole story, all 11 issues? He's, and he, Jimmy followed up saying that there was... It's two it's two trades. It's one story. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dragon, uh, Dragon Majesty says, definitely an interesting story so far. Pretty good. Okay, okay. Now we're... Okay, I think we're getting caught up here. Uh, Melissa says, I like classic Marvel, but not, uh, not modern Marvel. Oh. Well, we all like what we like, you know. I don't like all of uh, current Marvel or all current DC. I, I cherry pick what I like. Well, I like there. these things that are good. I would say that. Well, yeah, classic and I wouldn't Marvel say all has... classic Marvel is great. I mean, there's, I mean, to no, some people it's fantastic. More... You know, there's things I just don't, I'm not into. You know, old school Marvel was a lot more consistent. Like you didn't have. Well, a yeah, lot of con track. you get continuity, which which really helped out a lot. It did, but you also didn't now. have a bunch of Tumblr writers and artists hired to, to write fan fiction. Like, the people that were writing and drawing comics were pros that really earned their position. Nowadays, yeah. they just, hey, you look like someone we want, because whatever, here, here's there? a book. <laughs> You're like, what? Um, there's a lot of trash today. However, don't you can't let... Thing about modern comics is there's a ton of crap. You can hear me, okay. But you can't be discouraged and think that it's all crap. It's easy to like say something, Ash. I'm saying stuff right now. You don't hear me? Because you're cutting out. Oh, I see. I can hear you now, but you can't. You're... We got a circle going now. 
on my phone. All right. All right. Get some more of these comments through. Hold on. Do you, do you hear me yet? I can hear you now. All right. YouTube, My, I, YouTube's I, I just still not receiving the stream yet. I gotta. Oh. Because it's showing uh, the circle just went away. It had a white circle and that's gone. So well, when we see the be right back screen, let me know we're back. Now I see it. It a second delay on my phone. Now I see it. There we go. All right. Everyone should be able to hear. Uh, where are we are now? It's just hard. <laughs> I get now. I know what you feel like. Like you, you get distracted, and you gotta go scroll back up. Um, Marina says, "I'll admit the story moves well. Good pace." Uh, Lord's here. Hello, oh, well, Lord. Do, do, do. Need a healthy balance between the cerebral, aka the story, and the the, the serial, the action. Issue six is a different artist, but it fits. It's an original story for core, so don't be discouraged. Says Jimmy. The Black Order says uh, Doug Johnson. I'm not sure what that's referenced to. Uh, okay, uh, Marnie says she loves number number two. It's a lot better than number one. Dragon Ball Talk is telling us to read more. The X is uh, Jarborn. Yes. Jimmy, is that the... Jimmy, is that the X he uses when he becomes unworthy? Jarborn? Or did he just pick up some random X? Because I stopped reading after he became unworthy. I don't know. But it looks like I was right. This is the inside of the issue two here. It looks like there are the three different Thors... Um, we have the young, the distant past. Thor's younger self discovers a dead god of the Americas. Present day Thor finds the home of alien gods turned into an abattoir. And in the future, an ancient Thor fights familiar horde of monsters who have come to kill him. The last living god of Asgard. Something is killing gods, and now it's coming for Thor. Sing the Skip and Ash theme song live for us. I don't know it. <laughs> uh, no. Ronnie says the term is called connecting covers. Thank you, Ronnie. It's such a simple term, and I could not like think of it. I was like, I know there's a term. You're right, connecting covers. That's really that's the name of the term. That just sounds so generic. I know. <laughs> that's why I couldn't. I was. I, was like, what is, I know there's a name for it. There's a name for when you have covers and they connect. I just can't think of what it would be. And I'm not even drinking alcohol. <laughs> no, me neither. Maybe I need alcohol. It's that Pepsi Blue, I tell you. We need a Pepsi Red for us conservatives. Okay. Okay, so Jimmy confirmed that is the axe he uses uh, when he's unworthy, but then he, then he eventually gets a different hammer, which I thought it was... Uh... See, the, the, the first... Did you, you ever read that? Where he became unworthy and he was... Where Jane, where no. Jane was was the new Thor. No. no, he was using the I don't know the axe. He had a tattered cape, you know, the whole thing. And then like he had a chance to pick up the sixteen tens ultimate uh, universe, you know, Thor's hammer, but he refused to. And that's I I, I read up to that point, and I was like, you know, I'm done. I want Thor to have his hammer back. I'm sick of this, you know. Yeah, the Just last thing him, I was gonna do hammer. when when Jason Aaron was fucking up Thor with Jane Foster was read a side book called Unworthy Thor where real Thor is running around like a fucking putz. No. I was like, I was like I'm not touching this crap. I, I want, I want, because I was still reading Marvel time, you know, I wanted to see where this is going and I, and it, and it's got the point I'm like, oh, I do, like, you know, because they're setting up the world where they're going to have 1610 and all, and, and all the battle world and they're going to merge finally together. And I was like, oh, he's going to get like the ultimate Thor's, you know, hammer because that ultimate Thor is dead. And I was like, oh, he's going to get that. And then he's like, I don't want it. I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's weird. But all right, let's get into issue two because we got some people um, anticipating. Let's get in like Flynn. 
All right, here we go. Issue two. Be, get ready. Does Ash read you the greatest Thor story ever written? According to Jimmy. Many years ago, the great weapons hall of Asgard. Forged by dwarves from mystic Uru metal in the fires that would melt the sun, laden with enchantments by the All-Father himself, able to shatter whole planets as easy as pebbles. It is the most powerful weapon in all the Nine Realms, but only the worthy may lift it. I have wrestled dragons with my bare hands, slain wolves the size of longboats. I have fought in more battles than most gods twice my age. So tell me, how much more worthy must I be? Move, you blasted chunk of metal. Gah! By the bristling beard of Odin, you are one stubborn hammer. Someday, Mjolnir, someday you will be mine. And on that blessed morn, when I finally best ride the heavens, hammer in hand, woe be unto the enemies of Thor. Roar! Roar! Oh, that's a cool shot. Faster, you dogs. There'll be nothing left worth pillaging by the time we get there. 893 AD, the Baltic Sea. You heard your god of thunder. Are you not Norsemen? Then why do you row like land-loving Saxons? Row like Vikings, or be damned. The lot of you, row for death and glory, row for Thor. My lord, the fog grows thicker. Perhaps we should slow our pace, or else running aground. I have sailed through tempests of fire in the burning lands of Muspelheim, and endless hurricanes of ice in frozen Niflheim. No mere fog of Midgard will slow the son of Odin. Calm your fears, man of the north. You have the eyes of a god to guide you. There's something in the mist. A figure walking upon the water as if it were dry land. Stop your blubbering nonsense, you drunken fool. Sit down and get back to... I saw its face. It was, it was not the face of a man. Cease your chattering. You are not children to be spooked by mermaids. You are Vikings. You are the ones feared along every coast of Midgard. Now back to your rowing, or you will have my axe Jarnbjorn. Did I say that right? Jarnbjorn to answer to. Tell them to go slower until the fog passes. Yes, my lord, but you said, I know what I said. Just do it. I smell God flesh. Lead away, little godling. Lead me to your kin. Three days later, along the banks of the Neva River, in will, what will someday be called Russia. We can wait no longer. My men hunger for death and plunder. Let the battle begin. No. I did not cross an ocean merely to face a bunch of Slavs with spears. Thor was told there would be gods here. Rivermen, where are the gods you swore would protect you? Call them down and pray that they give Thor a decent fight. 
Our gods will be here soon enough, North Swine, and they will still will still that wagging tongue of yours. When Perun the Storm Lord and Chernobog the Black come flying in on their great winged stallions, golden axes in hand, thunderbolts flying, you will sing a different Here they come Lord Perun Is it is it him? Wait, I don't see that is your god. And behold, the bloody horse of doom, defender of the Slavs. That is Perun's steed. But where is our great god? Lord Thor, it would appear their gods haven't the nerve to face you. Might we have leave to do as you wish? Just save a cask of ale for me. The clouds drip blood, god blood. Immortals have died in these skies today. And it would appear the reign of death has just begun. Chernobog the Black, I presume. A bloody riderless horse and a headless god. Someone has ruined my fun for the day. The gods of the Slavs could have done this to themselves, I suppose. Fought each other over Odin knows what. I once saw two gods slay one another in an argument over the day of the week. But that would not explain the nagging feeling in the, black, in the back of my skull. The one I have had since the dead god's face in the water of Iceland. I imagine it is the same feeling the boar gets when the great horn sounds and the warriors rush into the trees the moment right before the spear go flying when the beast first realizes it's being hunted. Feel that, Lord, little Lord of Heaven? That sense of helplessness as you fall, that is how it feels to be mortal. Next you will learn how it feels to be butchered. Thump. Yeah. Ah, a fighter. I do so love fighters. You'd be surprised how many gods die like frightened children. The name is Thor Cloudstalker of Asgard. A warrior born. And the last god you will ever see. An Asgardian, eh? I believe you will be my first of those. But frets not over being lonely. Your entire pantheon will join you by the time I am through. Cring. As I gaze into the face of this killer of gods, I cannot help but be reminded by the min of a time many years ago, of another set of cold black eyes, of a mad god in a pit, of the day I learned the difference between war and murder. I was just a boy when a god named Dagger. Wait, hold on. Time out. His name's Dagger. Digger. I don't know. Da I just <laughs> remember it was like record scratch moment. There's, there's I'm going to say Dagger. Because Dagger. Dagger just sounds stupid. And, it's, and it probably is Dog. It's like 50 50 chance. Anyways, rewind. Take two. I was just a boy when a god named Dagger went on a wanton killing spree all across the Nine Realms. He'd slain hundreds by the time they got him and tossed him in a pit in Asgard to await his fate. In confusion, I went to Odin. Though I was barely able to walk, I had already seen my father slay thousands, 
invading trolls, warring giants, whole armies. He would come home drenched in their blood, and songs would be sung of his greatness. That was war, my father told me, and war was something very different than what Dogger had done. He said even the greatest of warriors never relished the killing stroke. To do so was to lose oneself to bloodlust, to become a monster. But still I was confused. So late one night I snuck from my bedchamber and crept through the empty halls of Asgard. And I went to see the mad god in the pit. I only wanted to see his face to see for myself how the eyes of a murderer were different than those of my father. I gazed down into the pit, straining for a view. Next thing I knew, my footing had slipped, and I was tumbling down into the darkness. I saw his eyes all right, but they weren't wild like I'd expected. They were calm and frighteningly serene. I made ready to defend myself, to bite into his face with what few teeth I had. But all he did was talk. In a delicate voice about what he had done, about who he had done it to and why. The why I struggled to understand, but he spoke with such passion, such remarkable conviction that it seemed more my failing than his. He'd killed children no bigger than me, he said babies even, but the god in the pit never laid a hand on me. And yet the way he looked at you so coldly through the darkness made you feel almost as if, as if you were already dead. I was in the pit for five hours before anyone found me. The next day, the murderous god died beneath Odin's blade. He never begged for mercy, never for a second showed a bit of remorse. His severed head was still smiling, still full of pride for what he had managed to accomplish. Odin and the others dismissed him as mad, but only I knew the truth. That what he truly was... Whoosh was something far more frightening. You're used to fighting things that shiver before you and gawk in awe at your greatness, aren't you, god of Asgard? Not someone who dares meet your divine gaze, let alone glare back. Arrgh! With complete and utter contempt for all that you are. I am used to fighting warriors, and you are most definitely not that butcher of gods. I have seen your like before. Urgh. No. No. I don't believe you have. I didn't sleep for weeks after my time in the pit. I was haunted by that voice, by those eyes. Every night for months I would pray to the elder gods that I might never again have to gaze upon such a visage. Now it seems that as with most prayers in life, mine have gone most profoundly unheard. I cannot help but wonder, little god, to the poor damned fools below us who worship you. What are you the god of? Axes, drunkenness, vanity, or war, perhaps? I have killed so many war, some very many gods of war, and gods of fear, gods of chaos, Gods of blood, and wrath, and jealousy, and lies, and plagues, and earthquakes, genocide, and revenge, of degradation, of 
death. Very few gods of poetry and flowers, though I killed those just the same. Tell me now, Prince of Asgard, before all you're able to do is whimper and scream, what was Thor the god of before he died? Thunder. Raccoon. Back to present day Thor. Faboom. The present day, deep space, a world of dead gods. It takes hours, but the servant of the god butcher finally falls. To make constructs such as this, his power must have grown considerably in the time since we last fought. But I expect he will... Yeah. You pause on the... If you're still there. Where he has the torch. Yeah. There we go. I can hear you now. Is this the scene right after where he has a torch? With the little... On the ground? Where he's lighting it? All right. Let's find that. There was that one, one before this. Yeah, Larry can both talk. He's like, no, the, the best part. <laughs> All right. I'll re, re I'll reread this this panel here. Oh. Just just to make sure good. everyone gets it. It takes hours, but the servant of the god butcher finally falls. To make constructs such as this, his power must have grown considerably in the time since we last fought. But I expect he will still be easy enough to find. I will simply follow the trail of the dead gods. I knew you not, gods of Indigar, but nevertheless you will be avenged. So swears Thor of Asgard. I will finish what I started long ago. No matter the butcher's power. No matter where he runs. No matter how long it takes. We cut to see old man Thor. Fly Mjolnir. To omnipotent city. To the halls of all-knowing. Fly with the speed, all the speed you can muster. For the longer we tarry, the more gods who will suffer. To be continued. This is kind of a weird cliffhanger because it's like old Thor. <laughs> like, I wonder if he died. Oh, wait, no, because we have future Thor. <laughs> so. And I got to say, this is how you write a story if you're going to have uh, past, present, and future. So Tom King, please read this. He's trying to do this kind of style in his bad cat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but he's failing miserably. <laughs> oh, Tom, yeah, Tom King is just, he's hes off the deep end. All right, I'm enjoying this book. I am enjoying it. So Jimmy can, I know, he, I know he's been looking forward to rubbing it in my face. Crazy. But I told him I promised. See, Jimmy, I I keep my promises. You had you'd have to wait a long time sometimes, but I promised I would read it, and there we go. So, <laughs> um, are you going to read comments for it? Where Look. I? I don't know where I left off. I got to scroll back up. The thong butcher. Yeah, I think it was yeah. It was... Um, and there's a lot of comments. Okay. Um. Okay, so it starts with uh, with me. Thor is, is he, I said he's an arrogant prick. <laughs> yeah, okay. I found that. Jimmy says it's pronounced yarn but yorn. I think it's pronounced yarn bjorn. Because the last 
The last word is Bjorn. But whatever. Um, this is how Thor should be. Arrogant, confident. Yeah, I agree. This is, that's what Rania's comment. Um, it's I mean, different from what... Well, he's, it's also... If this is the past Thor, and he hasn't come across any other Humans Avengers stuff, I can see why he's more like uh, upfront and like, he's more selfish, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's Thor. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, I, I got... I became a fan of Thor in the Marvel Universe because I was already a fan of the Norse mythos. And when mm-hmm. I saw Marvel had a comic, I was like, Marvel has a comic about Thor? Like, what? And uh, I started reading it, and I just fell in love with it. And I, I was like, yeah, I wanted, I want to see Thor. <laughs> like, I want, I want the mythology. Um, I don't, I don't really kind of like the modern stuff because, ironically, how Jason is writing here, I like. I feel like he's yeah. bringing the the arrogant, uh you know the brash warrior that thor was he turned him into this softy kind of i don't know i just the mcu did it too like i just don't like the whole i'm just the nice guy thor i'm like you're the fucking god of thunder you crush yeah, skulls I, like for fun i don't i don't really want to put i don't really put all the blame on what happened to thor for jason aaron i think it's more what like marvel directs him what to do because I mean, marvel has a specific specific way they want characters to go and if you're not following their lineup they're like you know that then you're pretty much gone off the book or they, your book's gone because yeah. it seems more like yeah they have they, they they want so current jason aaron i think is more what marvel wants him to do and he's not getting he's not as a liberty to do what he wants to or then again who knows it could be completely opposite you know i don't know maybe that's how, i mean that's, how, I that's think, how it really is i don't think that marvel was unhappy with this book like no, I just, not, I just think not, somewhere along the la- along the way, Jason went off track. What well, I mean, like current Jason, you yeah. know, on Avengers, is totally different from this Jason. So I don't know if that's because of editorial back then. Part of me thinks it's just your your peers. I mean, we're all human, and we tend that to we, we tend to mold to our circle of friends. Yeah, if you stand out, you, you're kind of like frowned upon. Yeah, you're looking, you're making me look bad by writing these good books. Like Kate's probably getting flack. Well, like I can remember, like like my high school period. There were three distinct periods I had in high school. Um, I went from where like I was kind of a popular kid in junior high, and I went to my first high school, and um, I kind of played that role. Then I transferred to my second high school, and then I started hanging out with all the metalheads. And they were all like, <laughs> like just pot smokers and getting drunk all the time. And I just, I mean, I ne- I was still the same person, but my my overall like how I carried myself was very different. Um, and then I realized that those guys were a bunch of idiots. <laughs> so then I, um, I that's where I met like I was like the nerd crowd uh, was my the end of my high school career. I was like, I don't want to fucking hang. I don't. I don't need to pretend. I don't need to be cool. I like these people over here are are actually genuine people. Um, they may not be popular. I was just tired of. Anyways, that's not what we're talking about tonight. But I think Jason. I think a lot of comic book pros fall into that realm where they're just trying to fit in with each other. And I, I, you know, the whisper networks are real. So I don't know. Maybe Jason came on the scene and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna write four smashing faces." And then later this has been on, your I was moment like, of you know, uh, Thor's yeah. like a little bit too toxic, masculine. Jason, maybe tone it down. Yeah, he's very <laughs> he's very misogynist. Tone it down a bit. And he's like, "Oh, don't worry, I got this cover. I'm gonna write female Thor, and that way he she can't be misogynist." Yeah, that was the whole plan. Maybe Thor. Maybe he just did that to like, not to stay off the radar. Thor got a misogyny. (laughs) If I write regular (laughs) Thor unworthy, then everyone will get off my back. (laughs) Can't me to me if I'm writing an uh, unworthy Thor. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we're onto something. Um, Maybe well, we're on something. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Let's see. That was one weird character design. Looks like he's wearing a thong. 
I know it was it kinda is, yeah. And then parts of it we saw where it's like it's missing like the, the side part of the thong and it just shifts to like so is he purposely moving the black glue to hide his his junk? Like is it part of his powers like a venom symbiote? Just slides to one side? No, or is this probably bad art? <laughs> Plenty of good art saw, action saw... in this one. I don't know why he don't read them all the time, says Dragon Ball Talk. You well, saw how it was the read... Man, the last what? book I read was had tons of art and action. I read uh, Reborn. There was people getting cleaved in half. I don't know. I... Were you there? Did you? Were you? Did you watch the Reborn issue? I, I watched the. Fir- I was there for the first two, and right. the last one. That was a good one. Um. So... It's less gay than the new X Men books. Uh, when was the last time Ash read a book where Thor broke someone's ribs with his axe? Never. I don't Never think he read that. a Thor with an axe. Um, he just has the hammer. Only book Ash ever read where Thor got choked by someone god level. Um, he enjoys the art and action. I like a light story, just why they battle. Dragon Ball, you're the reason why comics have turned into this pro wrestling scripts. Just like, all right, here's opponent A versus opponent B. Fight. <laughs> maybe Dragon Ball, maybe Jason Aaron is right up Dragon Ball's alley. Um, Let's see. Thor, Thor brought the hammer down, so to speak. Where's Jimmy? Jimmy's not commenting. Oh, he's down. He's at the, the very end. Yep. Um. Monty says Thor looks powerful here. The art makes you believe he could take down the God Butcher, even if he's here to take down just the servant. Um, I like I like the aerial stuff. I liked when he like was got his horse, his Pegasus or whatever his flying horse got his head chopped off, and he like yeah, jumped, in jumped down to the other one. That was some cool scenes. Um, I'm not a big fan of like massive action though, and then the characters like having this internal monologue. It it distracts me from the fight. That was one part that I wasn't. Super. That's the two. Uh, I I never I always hate about like internal monologue when you're fighting. It's like you know I'm thinking it's a huge. You gotta read all these words. And I'm thinking like, if this was real time action, like you wouldn't be you wouldn't be thinking that. He's just like cut smash. Well, I don't. I mean, it's a technique that I've seen used to good effect. But th- if the fight is just more of a basic fight, it's not like a pivotal fight of the, of the book, then that's okay. I don't mind that. You know, if, if you're just like beating up henchmen or something and then you're having the monologue, cause the fight isn't super important, but that fight was like, that was the first time you see Thor fighting the God butcher. And so you're like, Oh my God. And then he's having this other monologue going on and it was just distracting. Um, but I mean, I didn't hate it. It's still fun. I just, I found myself cause I was reading when you're reading live, this is one thing that if I were reading this to myself, I would have paused and I would have maybe looked at the art more or I might have like flipped back a couple pages and just kind of like rehash some of the some of the scenes just in my mind. But when you're reading live, I can't do that. I, I'm trying to keep the flow going. So that's why Never- I was I, I found myself going, wait a second. I totally missed that fight. I was so focused on reading. Um, <laughs> but. I all I saw was a thong, and I was getting frightened. <laughs> well, you wanted like... cheesecake, RDV, so I brought it to you. That was not the cheesecake <laughs> I signed up for. <laughs> that uh, was like spoiled cake. That was like devil. Ugh. Aaron is an atheist. He has nothing but contempt for Thor and the very idea of any god, big G or little G. Hence the introduction of the God Butcher. The real God Butcher is Aaron himself, says Doug Johnson. Ouch, that's a scathing comment, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, D- agree or disagree? That was a good comment. I, that's, I, I'm, I'm down for a good scathing comment like that. Um, very well said, too. Uh, Alex Ross done Universal Monsters comic book covers his Dracula and Frankenstein Wolfman. I don't even know if that. I'm just I fell asleep during that word salad. Sorry, okay. Melissa. <laughs> Jimmy was bringing up the Necro Sword. He was uh, bringing up the Necro Sword, which apparently he said was in Venom Three. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, 2021. I totally forgot about that. Sorry, Jimmy. 
Because he said that's what it is. Like, like uh, God Butcher is using a Necro Sword. I'm assuming that's why he brought up the name. Uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a special ability he had. But yeah, you know the Necro Sword turned into a big pile of nothing. They like hyped it all up and made it like, oh, the Necro Sword. And it's like, yeah, what happened? Like it, it I don't know. King in Black. I enjoyed King in Black, but Donny Cates didn't stick the landing, in my opinion. I don't know. I haven't read Venom 200 yet, so maybe. But that was like, that's it. That's next, how they just week, defeated the King in Black. I think. I think it's next week, right? Yeah. Did you finish the King in Black? Yeah, I finished it. Um, I don't remember what happened towards the end. <laughs> that's not <laughs> a good just... sign, right? <laughs> Everyone like, remembers what happens at the end of Star Wars, right? Like everyone, you go, what? How, how did Star that Wars? Where they get awards? Oh, they should give oh, them awards the around the The end of Star oh. Wars is Luke uses the Force, shoots the torpedoes, blows up the Death Star. Like everyone, Wait, he, you never go. How did Star Wars end? I don't remember. Did a submarine with torpedoes? That's no. <laughs> but with yeah, King in Black, I'm struggling. I'm like, how did it end? Had yeah. Oh, oh, and now I remember. Yes, yes, had, and now I remember. Had a lot of cool stuff. I I enjoyed reading King in Black. Like the whole journey of it was fun, and then you just got to the end, and it was like, oh, it's over. That now I know I remember. Yeah. I remember now because yeah, King of Black it ends with um him taking Thor's hammer and the Silver Surfer's like board. Yeah, and like creating a giant. That was kind of like, cool. There was a lot of cool things yeah. in King in Black. I just feel like the resolution. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's over. I didn't. I was waiting. For, I wanted some big climax. I wanted. I don't know. I wanted the. I wanted Null to be more badass, and I wanted that Necro Sword to be fucking badass. Yeah. Just didn't. So. Oh well. I am curious to see what happens in, two, in Venom Two Hundred because the fact that you know, yeah, it's. But like I like said, maybe there's more going on because. Eddie has Venom Two Hundred is a ninety-six page book. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Eddie Eddie freed all the symbiotes. Yeah. They all didn't they all merge with him or did he send him away? They uh, all merged. I forget. Uh, either way, talk about Venom. Someone mentioned. Let's we'll talk so about got, issue number four. Again. Dragon Ball number says I don't know what year it was, but I got Doom twenty ninety nine issue one on the wall. Well, it depends on which which Doom twenty ninety nine number one. The original Doom twenty ninety nine number one. I, I think I that was like nineteen ninety ish. When they did the original 2099 series or the recent one that they did, which I think came out in 2019. Probably. Um, At least a few years back. Chip Zdarsky did a Doom 2099 book, which I really liked because it actually finally explained the whole thing about Doom 2099 from way back in the 90s was, is this really Dr. Is this Victor Von Doom? That somehow is yeah. living still in 2099? Nope. Or is this like a Doom bot? Or like, no, like the whole thing, like when you're reading the book, you don't know who it is because he never takes off his mask. So you, the reader, it's like a mystery. Like, is, who, who is this guy? I, and then I the, thought they said that. Yeah, the, the, that series. I don't remember. Original. I don't remember. I, I remember being like. It. But Chip Zdarsky I, answered it in his recent, that Doom 2099 one shot. And the answer is really fucking cool. I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone, but if okay, well, I just know from I I remember I thought it was the original one. This turned out it wasn't him. He thought he was Doom, where it was re- resurrected, but it wasn't. Oh, you got to read the Doom 2099 one shot by Chip Zdarsky. With the answer, the because... is cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. my god. Um, let's see. Uh, Alex Ross done Doctor Doom art and Thor. Says Melissa. Um. He's done a lot of stuff. I'd, I'm, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, uh, read some more, Ash, says Jimmy. Nope, two books. It's already after midnight. We're past. Supposed to end by midnight. I, went, I ran long. Uh, yes, Aaron is an atheist. Of course he's an atheist. <laughs> the whole comic industry is atheist. They're, never mind. I'm not going to get into politics. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a hardcore yeah. leftist, you're almost certainly an atheist. The, the, hand in hand. Um, Jason Aaron can write, but nowadays he's hit or miss. Gore may have dealt with a bad hand, which makes him sympathetic. Oh, may have dealt. Yeah. He had a, however, it doesn't justify his actions. He's still a dangerous villain. 
uh yeah all, all modern villains are sympathetic every single one they they i have yet to see a modern villain in the last say like the last 10 years see if you can think of one you guys in the audience think of one is there a modern villain in the last 10 years who's not sympathetic who's literally wow. just i'm a bad guy and i like to hurt people and I'm just evil, like just no sympathy. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna say that you won't find that on any of the CW Flash because it's just no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but in comics in general, every villain is like, uh, oh, he had a hard up you know and he did this, and uh, you're like always sympathizing with him. Actually, uh, now that you mention it, I would say you're Barth Thon. Who? Reverse Flash. You're Barth Thon. Reverse Flash. He's mm. just straight up. He's just straight up killer. Hmm. But he's not he's an old school villain though. He don't count. Yeah, yeah. Any any new ones? I, I can't think it's of hard, any. It's hard to tell with it's hard to tell because a lot of these new ones are like they haven't really had much time to really flourish. Like like look at Timmy and he introduced Ghostmaker, who was a villain at first, you know, or and I'd say a villain but antagonist. But now he's like a hero. So it's like I'm trying to think who's been introduced. Other than Null. I mean, there is, uh, an, if you're considered 5G, it has that Simon Sink guy and whatever it is. But it's like, none of those characters really matter. No, they're not Jimmy, really. Jimmy says Ramsey Bolton. <laughs> Man, that's, that's. Michael that's, Bolton's brother? Ramsey oh, Bolton Jerry. is a despicable uh -oh. villain. However, unfortunately, Jimmy, he's not in the last 10 years, and he's also not a comic book villain. Melissa, don't worry about the CW Powerpuff Girls. They got scrapped. They're bringing Naomi instead. Oh my god, the new Naomi. Oh my god, <laughs> they're making a TV show of Naomi. Naomi, Naomi's so powerful. She's she's three, she took out three Powerpuff Girls all by herself. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> believe they're making a Naomi TV show. This. Uh. Uh. uh hey. I'm looking forward to watching. I want to see this train wreck. Everybody says like Batwoman's the worst single thing. And like, you know, like, hold my beer and my staff, my crown. Melissa says Frankenstein is my favorite monster. He exists both in Marvel and DC, just like Dracula exists in DC and Marvel. Well, also, Melissa, do you know that Thor exists in both Marvel and DC? Since we're on the topic of crossing that, it's kind of interesting, right? <laughs> DC has a Thor, Marvel has Thor. Um, they both have Zeus as well. Let's see. Skeletor? <laughs> Jimmy says Hello, within I'm the kidding. last 20 years and he's in the comic adaptations. Yeah, Jimmy, that's not the criteria. <laughs> it was 10 years and comics, not 20 years and adapted from something else. Um, <laughs> Jimmy's like, Man, I'll make up my own categories so I can. It's, it's 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 hard to find because like, in the past ten years, even more of that, you find so many villains who've been all are all good guys now. Everybody has a redemption arc. Oh yeah. Oh the oh, modern leftists they love they they because they see themselves in the villains. Yeah. That's why they they hate the heroes because the heroes actually stand for truth and justice and stuff, and t they're just sickened by it. Um. So like, they, I, the I, villains I, is what they identify with, which is why a lot of the modern writing by the leftist writers are about these villains, and they're always sympathetic villains, and always they take the heroes and they turn the heroes into failures because they don't like to see heroes who are uh, aspirational and good and virtuous. They hate that, so they always have to break them. They got to find a way, you know, like Spider Man's got to lose mary jane he's got to sleep around they got to like bring everyone down to their level you know they can't stand to see uh any noble pro oh S captain america he's actually was a nazi the whole time he's not actually a good guy <laughs> you're like jesus um, he's a nazi all along yeah Sorry. it's, <laughs> it's like, and, and uh, if you pay attention that's how it is and then they'll turn the villains into sympathetic and oftentimes we'll have this redemption arc or they'll just be here. Like, look at, dude, Harley Quinn is running around with the Justice League. <laughs> like, what the fuck? This is, this is a mass murderer. Like, 
crazy. I mean, we live in a world where George Floyd is, they're going to probably build statues to him. Then we'll probably have holidays going forward. We're going to idolize this guy who hurt people and did drugs and, you know, I'm not saying he should have died. I'm not getting into that, but he sh we shouldn't be idolizing him. Just trying to think of it because, like I said, there's so many characters that, that were evil and became good. It's, I'm, I, and then it, yeah, because it's hard. It's hard to think of going back. Yeah, and like, Venom. This... I mean, we gotta do Doctor Doom is like the, the ultimate Marvel bad guy, and they're like right. He's got his own book now, and he's kind of like he's not necessarily a good guy, but he's kind of quasi like they're they're making him like less villainish, you know. It's like, and that started with Bendis when he was taken up. You know, the infamous Iron Man story. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for Carnage to become a good guy. That'll be that'll be hilarious. I'm just trying to think of like I can't I can't think of a hand who are still evil. You know that don't, haven't become good. Like Loki was the evil the one of the most evilest person there is, and then now he's good now. Oh um, yeah, Loki's been totally made into a, a hero. Well. Yeah, not, not a virtuous hero, but that's another thing you'll notice is they don't necessarily make these guys virtuous. They just make them idols. Um, Jimmy says gore is the closest thing you'll get to just pure evil. Yeah, gore is pretty bad, but from what I know about gore, though, the, even he has like a sympathetic backstory where you're like, oh, shit. He like he became this way. Um, yeah. Oh, you know who's pretty evil? No, got to hand it to Donny Cates. Yeah, as I said, that's I don't think I can think of it within the past few years. But no. Oh, you said no. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no is pretty oh, much Joker. like a straight up. I'm an evil villain. Joker too. Yeah, but Joker's Joker. old. I'm talking about like I the know. last ten years. No is probably. He's got no sympathy. There's no. There's no like. Oh, no had it so bad when he's a kid and. You know, it was just, dude is plain up just bad. Uh, Doug says Thanos is my hero. <laughs> 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 uh, uh. I, I'm trying to think of it. it was just, just created, like, new characters. I can't think of anything because, like, you go to Marvel, uh, uh, Gore probably is within the past... This is 2012, so yeah, it would be it would be the past. Well, I guess now you say 10 years now because 2021 would be 11 years. I mean, hell, Marvel turned Phoenix into, into, a, into a thing. A, Phoenix has yeah. always been bad, forever. Thanks, Jason. So Jimmy says he does have a sympathetic origin, but the ending will justify what I say. And I'm and not, can't speak, and I'm not uh, calling can't you speak. a liar, Jimmy. I'm just saying that as long as Jason Aaron's around. There could be some sort of future story where Gore <laughs> Gore becomes an antihero. I, I I don't know what he did with I, Phoenix. I I was like, I what what just what? <laughs> he did, yeah, he did one of the wow. But I mean, I mean, they made Galactus this, good at one point. Is Taskmaster is Taskmaster still evil? So I know Osborn isn't anymore. Osborn yeah, Taskmaster like, was never really evil. He was more of just like, I do these things for myself. Like he takes jobs. He was never like, I mean, he's not a good guy, but he wasn't like out to do evil things. Like he would, I, if I remember correctly, he was like kind of like a mercenary. Um, what about Black Hand? Did he have a redemption? The Black Hand? Yeah, William Hand. He was from uh, DC. Oh, I don't know that character. From Blackest Night. Um, I didn't read Blackest Night. Yeah, that's something. That's a story I need to read. Huh. Huh. You're, yeah, if you're talking about ones who've just been created, you know, the past ten years. I can only think of Core. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of new characters. Um, yeah. Dormammu is still evil. <laughs> Can't wait. But then his son is like at Strange Academy. So it's like, what? Oh, yeah. 
I'm evil, but I'm sending my kid to their old school. What the fuck? Black Hand is still evil, says Dominic. And Dragon says, I'm pretty sure Black Hand is straight dead. <laughs> um, Dragon Magic says, Thanos Rising does try to make Thanos sympathetic. Is Thanos Mordak? Rising the one that was written by, like, uh, not V, like, teen, uh, didn't Teeny Howard do a Thanos book? And it was, like, the dullest thing. <laughs> it's like, it just Thanos. basically killed Thanos. Like, not Thanos literally Rising. killed it, but, like, just killed the series because Thanos was like the hottest fucking thing at Marvel. And then they gave Thanos Rising is, is Jason Aaron. So that's one know. through five. Who did the most recent one? I, I swear it was like Teeny Howard or Vita Ayala or someone. Rico Tamaki was one of the girl writers. And I was like, you gave Thanos to who? What? What? <laughs> Teeny Howard. Trini Howard is 2009. She did uh, Zero Sanctuary. No, this was like really recent. Like it was. It- well, 2019 like, was that a couple years ago. 2019. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Did she do 2019? Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I never read it, but I just that movie just or a movie. Sorry that that comic just yeah. went off a cliff. Like, yeah. Like, Thanos was super hot with like Thanos wins in 2018 that put Donny Cates into superstardom. And they're like, he you wins, Donny. You could have a book too, and it's just like. No one wants Thanos anymore. <laughs> yeah, that like, was where Thanos is dead. Just like, by no one likes Thanos anymore. Like, are you kidding, Marvel? This is the the destruction when you put these damn Tumblr art writers on these books. You, you don't just like have a failure of a book. You literally kill a franchise. Right? It's like it's like back when I was a kid. Um and like I was like, like I was like the late '80s, or early '90s. Jack in the Box had like an E. coli scare, or actually not an E. coli scare. Like it happened. Like people died. <laughs> Fucking kill, almost killed off the company. Like it was this huge news. Like like no one, you know, it wasn't like the internet nowadays where like news stories like have about a four hour lifespan and people just are like on to the next thing. Back then, you without the internet, like news stories hung around, especially if there wasn't anything else big. So it was just like constantly, like, can you believe people died from eating Jack in the Box burgers? Like, no one would go there. Like, it just, it was a no. big deal. Like, that's what putting Teeny Howard, she's, she's, not just her, but like Vita Ayala. These, these, these girls, they're the E. coli of writers. And then you put them on these books. Like, what's her name? They put on Aquaman. Now there is no Aquaman book. There's literally DC does not have an Aquaman book. It's their biggest, arguably their biggest franchise in the movie universe because the dipshits over at Warner Brothers can't figure out how to do another Superman movie. Even though you got, you know, the boy just sitting there going, I want to do a new Superman movie. And right here, they can't figure out how to like, let's just put a movie together. Uh, it's it's kind of like just printing money. <laughs> they can't figure it out. Uh, they they can't get Ben Affleck to do the Batman, so they're going off and doing this other stupid thing. They're destroying the DCEU. Meanwhile, Aquaman, surprise, surprise, of all the freaking DC characters you would think would have a stable movie franchise. They're like, look, we just did a billion-dollar movie. Everyone wants to see Jason Momoa suit up again. Let's do this thing. You know, like, right? Uh, we should, probably shouldn't have a comic right now. It, like, what... <laughs> Kelly Sue DeConnick. She's fucking E. coli. Annihilus is still uh, evil. <laughs> Annihilus is still evil. Yeah, they sh- oh, they kind of overdid him for a while. Yeah. Um, I wrote Dragon Ball says I wrote a seventy page, seventy five page comic, but it's basically fan art. The person that drew it, we can't share it with nobody. We'll get sued. What do you mean you can't share it? How would you get sued? You can share it. You just can't publish it so like you couldn't put it on youtube or anything because that would be considered publishing you can't make you can't use the name and stuff if you draw like fan art like this is thor and then try selling it and stuff all the other if you're passing it off you know all depends what you're doing with it though there's fair it's, use right yeah there, there's fair use just like ingle team with his daughter she can draw stuff like you know with uh, thor Oh, or yeah. whatever. And that's why I mean, to... there's like there's like fan fiction websites where yeah, you can go yeah, where you... people who are like, I'm gonna write my own Star Wars stories, and you can just go. Um. So yeah, I mean, you can share it, but it's just 
it's limited how you do it. You can't like publish well, it that, to the web and be well, like that was, uh, that was that uh, was Marvel was going up like, and taking apart and make creating custom ones and of like characters that Marvel didn't have in and their Hasbro you know their Legend line you know toys like like uh, I remember uh, my friend Manny uh, uh, Skunk Dog you know good uh, good dog or, 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 or Skunk Girl is his thing is good dog press is his thing. He was telling me back in the day before they Marvel Marvel started doing all this stuff. You know, uh, he was taking figures, buying them, and then repainting them. You know, and putting them together, putting new heads on them, stuff, and just creating custom do- uh, figurines of characters that Marvel had not put out, didn't care to put out. And he was selling them on eBay. He was making tons of cash off it. And then he finally got he got a Marvel cease and desist because he was doing this because he was you know because that. And then he said, not even a year later, they started putting out those action figures. Hmm. So it's like. And the thing is, like, he wasn't the only one, but he was, but he said it, he was like, he, but he was like bringing in the money. It's like, it was totally, you'd buy it for whatever, the $10 or whatever it is. And then he's selling it for like, you know, 20. Yeah. There was, um, there were some fake pops going around for a while. That too. You got to get all, but, and that I'm, I'm kind of bummed because there was one that I wanted to get. Some guy had made a Stan Lee pop. And it was Stan, but and he had the Infinity Gauntlet on one hand, and it was so cool. I was like, <laughs> and it looked real. I mean, it looked like, and it was in a box, in the pop box. I mean, it looked like Funko made this. Uh, I didn't know it was even counterfeit at first. I was like, I gotta get this. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So some of the guys that do that stuff is is pretty cool. Um. Yeah, it sucks when corporations. Yeah, but I'm just shit. just trying to think of like what villains are haven't been redeemed yet. And like Viper, she's still freaking evil. Um, but like new characters, like that's the thing with Marvel doesn't really do new characters at all much. And if they do, it's like it's not really a popular character, so you don't really hear about it. Like. Only reason I know about the God Butcher is because of Jimmy. Jimmy just like went crazy. He's like, "Hey, you know, I gotta read this." No, it's like, okay. So I knew about that character who he's talking about, but you know, but Marvel and DC like to recycle a lot of their old characters. Like Bullseye is constantly in the Daredevil books. Yeah, uh, they either like to Daredevil. recycle their characters or they like to transform. Like they make copies. So there's got like Lady Bullseye, for example. I'm like, oh, well, I speaking of which, did you read the new Bullseye? Did I read the new Bullseye? No, sorry, not, not, not Bullseye, but the new Daredevil, sorry. <laughs> not the latest, latest issue, no. Uh, you should read it. I, I, I will. I, <laughs> um, I'm caught up to the issue before it. I just haven't read the newest issue. Um, let's see. Thor is a Marvel Universe candidate for the 10 contestants for the Tournament of Power representing their universe. Yeah, didn't they have? Didn't they already have like a thing where they had with the with the game I think master? Or they or they had to like it was heroes versus villains. I have no idea. Was that was that Infinity Gauntlet? No, I don't know if it was that. It was the other one. It was the other one. Uh, they had another. I think there was, there was a done huge... so much you can't even keep up. Yeah, back in the like day, four or five <laughs> line wide events per year. Now, think about this. Think about like how much stuff has happened. It feels like only yesterday they were doing War of the Realms. And since then, I mean, think of all the events. I can't remember even them all. We've had like Empire, we're on Heroes Are Born, I'm you looking had up right now. Carnage, you <laughs> got there was some annihilation. I think they did an annihilation thing. They did uh, uh King in Black. Um God, there's Secret. more I'm not even remembering. Just it's just like nonstop events, events, events. Contest the champions. Then they had yes, yeah, yeah. You had Secret Wars, you know, one through twelve. Which oh. was, issues one through twelve, like eighty four. And then yeah, then you had the Wraith War, Secret Wars two. Well, I'm uh, just talking about the last couple of years. So I know I'm going go up. back like a decade or like you're just like this. The amount of stories, the amount of things that have happened. It's just like you. You have to be like a dedicated Marvel fanatic to keep up with all this stuff. Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity Crusade. <laughs> yeah, like... there's a million Infinity things. <laughs> and you know that's coming back. I'll bet you 
by 2022, Damn. we're going to have a new Infinity story. Because Marvel doesn't know how to make new stuff. I mean, look at where Heroes Reborn. From 1996 to 2021, yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, if you look at how many there is, there's like oh, there's a lot. Not not even just the big ones, you know. All I'm right, it's, it is after twelve thirty here, so we have gone way long. But I appreciate. It. Thanks for coming on, Vankman. Um, no problem. It's always good to have someone fun to talk to rather than just me. Uh, hopefully, sure, you guys sure, who are listening in um, enjoy, enjoyed the books. Uh, what did you think? You, this is your first time Thor the God Butcher, right? For the first two, it's 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 pretty decent. I don't like when they when they skip around, like go from past, present, future. You know, I I like having having just normal once one present, current, you know, storyline. But it, there's he's basically trying to say like this has happened before and now it's happening again, and it's in, in, in like. And you see, and you see, like what's going on in the, in the future version of him. And so I'm like, okay, well, we already know what's going to happen in the future. He loses the arm. That like, kind of spoils it for me. Oh, you know, it's like now is the present. He gonna is, is something gonna change in the next issue? He's, he's gonna get, like figure out and change something, and then he gets his arm back in the in the future. I mean, like it just feels like it's already set. Well, I mean, that's, set. that's comics. I mean, when you're reading comics like this. You know the main hero is not going to die. It's not so much about like, oh my god, is Thor going to get out of this alive? It's more of like, hmm, Thor's probably going to win, but how? How is he going to do it? And that Like I would I like said the way I would have done it is that like the first issue, the first two issues be like, you know, flashback, him going into this again the first time. And then you go then you go jump to the present and the third and the fourth, you know? And then whatever the sixth and seventh you want to do. Well, I like the flashback well, because the it's Thor when he finds the dead gods. He's like, this is like happened before. Like, I yeah, remember. I mean, so I, you had to go I'm back not, and be like, no, I'm not putting on the story. The I just don't like having. Go ahead. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't like having like all three stories and in, in one book. You know, one issue. I like having like get yeah, the the past. You start. She start off with the beginning of the story, which is the past, and then it jumps to it. You know, you know, unless he says like you know. I wonder, and then it, 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 has a, and it has like a little flashback thing, and then it goes to like that. No, that'd be more make more sense. I think if you watch a movie, there's a flashback. But like I said, I'm not a fan of when you when you show like past, present, and future all together. It's a little con, con jumbled or confusing. Yeah, the future part. Talking, you, the future part was a little weird because I didn't see the need to show that part yet. Well, yeah, you're you're but, telling three stories at once. Yeah, I think just if it were just a normal story and then having a flashback it wouldn't have been as confusing when they threw in the future thor i was like huh however if i were reading this when it was coming out i mean it's it's some of it's is spoiled right like we this is like this book happened what almost almost a decade ago this book came out um so we kind of know what thor's been through for the most part since then but if you were reading this book like when it was hitting the shelves and you get that issue, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, there's future Thor. Why is he missing an eye? Why is he got freaking destroyer arm? That would be kind of intriguing. You know, you'd be, you'd be, it would be throwing questions at you. Um, nowadays, we kind of know, like, uh, we're just like, uh, we roll our eyes because it's happened. And it's, we've, we've been through it. But at the time, I think it would have been intriguing um, to see that glimpse of the future. So I'm not going to knock it too much for that. Yep. You like the but art? The art's good. Like I said, the art is good. Um, like I said, you're getting Thor being Thor. In this. Like, you, like you get to see the different personalities. In the present, he's more like he's not as arrogant as he was. In, in the, as he was. He's, he's younger. And that was before he got the hammer, I believe, in, in the, the past. So now, you know, it's been so many years, centuries now, it's like he's now in, I think he's in the present, he's more in the modern. Like he's he's come across Avengers, and then uh, the the future is probably like a future without the Avengers. Yeah, That's the, future, the like. future is like I'm I'm assuming like, is like thousands of years in the future. It's like it's like uh with Kate's you know like you know after Thanos wins you know. Yeah, I'm ass I'm assuming that I don't know. Um, the the modern one obviously is the whatever Thor was in 2012. It's just the present day Thor. Um. So. It's pretty cool. We're going to wrap this up, though, because I do have some work to do. 
Um, so I can't be hanging around all night. Um, but I, I I'm got glad you enjoyed it. I hope you guys in the chat enjoyed it. Thanks for all your comments and talking about the book. It makes it better when multiple people participate in the conversation. Seems like most people were pretty happy with the book. Even Dragon Ball got some blood and action that he likes. Um, do you have any final things you want to say or any books you want to plug before we say goodnight? I just want to say come back for issues three and four with more thongs. More thongs. Okay, <laughs> Thursday night will be Thursday night thong night. <laughs> thong Thursdays here on Ash on Comics. So stay Where tuned. Ash, where's the... <laughs> the reader has to wear it too. <laughs> stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.